of Oklahoma football is on the air. Every play, every exciting minute of this week's game. Today, the Sooners take on the Stanford Cardinal in Palo Alto, California. Brought to you by Allied Oklahoma Bank. Riders Discount Foods. The Oklahoma City Metro Pontiac Dealers. And KGMC TV Channel 34, the winner. And now, here's Chris Lincoln and Robbie Robertson. football season, the number two ranked Oklahoma Sooners versus the Stanford Cardinal. From Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, hot Saturday. The 89th consecutive season of Sooner football. And Robbie, with the Sooners ranked number two now, they a lot of excitement about this season. Oh, you head coach Barry Switzer is real excited about this season, Chris, because he has 17 starters back. Uh, a team that is dominated by seniors, and this is going to be the best chance the Sooners have had in two years to get back on top of the Big 8 Conference and uh, certainly contend for a national championship. Well, Oklahoma talks about nine defensive starters back, but when you start with Oklahoma, you have to talk about this young man, Marcus Dupree, marvelous Marcus. 6'3", 230-pound sophomore from Philadelphia, Mississippi, the best freshman in the country last year, rushed for uh, 905 yards, scored 13 touchdowns, and many of them long distance. He is an outstanding player. I know Oklahoma folks have heard, they've read all the rumors. Marcus Dupree isn't happy. Barry Switzer's not happy. What's the story, Robbie? I think most of that has been blown out of proportion, Chris. Uh, Marcus Dupree is happy to be at Oklahoma. Any freshman in America worth their salt would be unhappy if they weren't <laughs> playing. So Marcus Dupree fits into that mold. But Coach Switzer and Marcus get along fine. He is, uh, I feel, handling all the preseason publicity quite well, and he is ready to have a good 1983. Well, the Stanford team, they're calling it the A.E. era. This is after Elway. And here's the man who's going to take over for him. This is Steve Cottrell, their senior quarterback. Hasn't played very much. 5'10", 185-pound senior. You don't get to play very much when you're behind John Elway. Only threw nine passes last year, but Stanford recruits quarterbacks like OU recruits running back, so obviously the fella has got some talent, and the OU defense will be tested today on the right arm of Steve Cottrell. And they will be throwing the football a lot. If he doesn't work, they've got an outstanding freshman there, and I've been taking a look at A young man named Payne. We may be seeing some of him, too. Now, defensively, Robbie, both teams return nine defensive starters, but that's where all the similarity ends. Well, I really think so, because Stanford, even though they have nine starters returning on defense, and that really is the strength of their ball club, uh, they were the worst defensive team in the Pac-10 conference last year. On the right of your screen, uh, Gareth, uh, Garen Barris, who is the uh, defensive end. They've switched from a 3-4 defense this year to a 4-3. He is an outstanding player. And on the left of your screen, number 80, Rick Bryan, All-America last year, the Big A Conference Defensive Player of the Year. He is a preseason All-America. Again, he is an outstanding player and will be the ringleader on the Oklahoma defense this year. Well, there was a lot to prove today. A lot to prove for an Oklahoma football team that thought they should have won the Fiesta Bowl. A lot that thought they should have won maybe the Big A Championship. They didn't. Now is their time to start again. All the spring practice drops all the fall practice and it's about ready to go for real we'll be back in just a moment for the kickoff of the oklahoma stanford game as we start the 1983 season right after this they will be receiving oklahoma will kick off from left to right the sooners in their road white the crimson numerals crimson helmet of course the big ou on the side and the stanford cardinals in the cardinal red home jerseys with the white helmets the red at this series is tied at 1-1. Oklahoma won here at Stanford Stadium in 1978, 35-29. In 1980, Stanford and a young man named John Elway shocked the Sooner fans with a 31-14 victory in the rain in Norman as John Elway passed the three touchdowns and ran for a fourth. That won't happen today. There's no John Elway and a lot of questions to be answered for both teams and uh, finally I know both very anxious to get the season underway. Oklahoma's really anxious, Robbie. They're out. They're lined up, ready to kick off and Stanford has yet to come on uh, as far as getting their defensive position and getting ready to return the kickoff. Well, I think the Sooners have waited uh, ever since the Fiesta Bowl, Chris. Uh, a lot of people down on the Oklahoma Sooners because of their showing in the past two years. They've lost eight games in the past two years and this is a senior-dominated ball club. There won't be any excuses this year. The Oklahoma Sooners have an outstanding football team, and they are ready to show that to the rest of the nation. As you can see, we have a beautiful day for football here in Palo Alto, California. 
as uh, freshman Darren Ataya gets ready to hoot the ball off. 73 degrees, the wind out of the east, uh, 10 or 12 miles an hour. School is not in here at Stanford yet. They're still a couple of weeks away. This stadium, uh, 61 years old, holds almost 85,000 people. They will have a crowd of much less than that, probably uh, somewhere around 50,000 for the season opener for both ball clubs, and we are just about ready to get underway. Oklahoma again with a young man checking off for the first time in game conditions, Darren Ataya. The referee is Vance Carlson, the big 80. This is split crew. Ataya approaches the football, and the 89th season of Sooner football is underway. Thomas Henley at the 5, 10. Henley, big hole, 20. Henley, 25, tripped up, and down he goes at the 27-yard line. Just tripped up as he went through for Oklahoma. Looks like Brad McBride, a reserve defensive end, was in there on the step. Also, Paul Miglizao, the uh, freshman linebacking candidate. Miliazzo, freshman. Stanford offense, as they break the huddle, there you see Steve Cottrell, Moore, Scott, Tolliver, Emil Harry, All-American candidate, and Jim Clymer, the tight end. Cottrell, a lot to prove here. The man who's taken over for John Elway. Stanford, first and 10 at their 26-yard line. In the backfield to the 30-yard line, gain of about four yards. Goes Kevin Scott, number 24. Scott, a sophomore out of the state of Washington. Now let's take a look at the men up front. Good size. Deaton is 6'3", 270. Moran is 6'4", 260. Martin is 6'4", 246. Rookup is 6'2", 253. And Avenette is 6'1", and 239. So they've got some good size up front. Jackie Chip is the man down for Oklahoma after the first play from scrimmage. And there's an area where the Sooners really have very questionable depth. They've made some changes this year on the Oklahoma defense, Chris. They have moved Jackie Ship from weak side linebacker to strong side linebacker. And uh, they have uh, switched Thomas Benson will now play the weak side linebacker. And that is just because Jackie Ship will line up uh, on the tight end side of the football. We'll take another look at it. The strength of the Stanford Cardinal offense is in their passing game, as you might imagine. They start with a running play. And Scott, uh, as you can see, Ship puts the hit on him right there. Kevin Murphy with him as well. Maybe uh, just got the wind knocked out of it. Looks like Murphy might have hit the back of his leg. The freshman Evan Gatewood is in 54 linebacker. Back to pass. It's caught with his first throw, and it is thrown for it. Way behind the intended receiver, the halfback Kevin Scott. And it will be third down and seven for the Cardinals. You saw Rick Bryant in there, the All-American defensive tackle from the Sooners in there as we take a look at the Oklahoma Sooner defensive line. Goodlow and Murphy, the ends. Bryant and Slater, the tackles, and sophomore uh, Tony Casillas. Uh, playing nose guard and there's the linebackers the defensive back Benson and Ship in the secondary Hall, Stanberry, Case and Drain they are a veteran group it is third down and seven of Stanford shifts receivers around keep in mind they need the 37 yard line for a first down as Cottrell looks to throw in the middle and is knocked down by a big Oklahoma defender getting his hands in the air Tony Casillas or Bob Slater one of the other and it'll be fourth down and punt situation for Stanford Tony Casillas out of Tulsa getting his first chance to start this year gets the big hand up and Steve Cottrell that's one of the problems for Cottrell he's only 5'10 so he can't look over the lineman like a 6'3 or 6'4 quarterback so the first series of downs is a good one for the Oklahoma Sooners and Stanford is in punt formation. Jeff Harden who averaged almost 40 yards of punt last season back to kick it away for Stanford and Buster Ryan single safety position for Oklahoma now Scott Case drops back it is fourth down seven for Stanford. Good. Nice spiral by Harden. Buster Ryan, first time he's touched a football in two years. Ryan's at the 40. Ryan, 45. Got a wall at midfield. And Buster is hit just as he crosses midfield. Cut back inside. Looked like if he stayed outside, he had more running room. 37-yard punt. And a 14-yard return for George Buster Ryan, who's the only player on the Oklahoma team with a college degree. He got it from junior college. And as you take another look at it, Buster Rhymes played for two years and uh, was dismissed from the team for disciplinary reasons. He has a lot to prove this year. Gets to the wall on the left side of the field, tries to cut back, and is finally tackled. There it is for the first time in 83. The Oklahoma offense, they start in the eye. Spencer Tillman, the exciting fullback out of Tulsa. The fifth goes back, Marcus Dupree. Dupree, 50, 45, Dupree, 40. To the 38-yard line is Marcus. Rips off 11 yards in his first carry of 1983. Marcus Dupree, 6'3", 230 pounds as we take another look at it. Good blocking on the right side. And Marcus Dupree finds the hole, picks up a first down, and we've got an official timeout. 
Take a look at the Oklahoma Sooner offense. Danny Bradley, the junior from Arkansas, the quarterback. Marcus Dupree, the tailback. Freshman Spencer Tillman at fullback. Steve Sewell, a wide receiver. Johnny Fontenet back at tight end. And Buster Rhymes is the split end. The offensive line has Burks, Parker, Thomas, Randolph, and Dillingham. Interesting story in that front line. Randolph and Dillingham not expected to start this year, but because of the efforts they had in spring and fall practice, they have uh, won the starting jobs for the Sooners up front. Robbie, that Sooner offensive line up front, left to right, is 6'7", 270. 6'3", 280. 6'3", 270. 6'3", 252, and 6'5", 265. They have measured, and they're going to say Marcus Dupree gets 9, not 11, just short of a first down. So the Sooners have short yardage, and Oklahoma shows their wishbone. Yeah, Galen Hall, offensive coordinator, said they'd use wishbone about 40% of the time. Fullback Spencer Tillman up the middle, first down Oklahoma. At the Stanford 35-yard line, as Tillman carries for the first time as a Sooner in varsity action. Mike Wyman. Number 79, the defensive tackle, made the stop. As you take a look at the Cardinal events, Garen Barris has done a lot of talking. Robbie will fill his in on that. Then Wyman, Mitchell, and Bergen. Those are the four up front as they've changed from the 3-4. And then Brill, Wyman, Sutherland, Baird, Williams, Hutchings, and Price have got great height in their defensive secondary. But a story in a moment about Garen Varys here. Oklahoma wishbone, first and ten, stand for 35. This is Tillman, hit right at the line of scrimmage, gets ahead for just a couple of yards. Good job by the Stanford defense. And there he is, number 80, Garen Varys. He's done a lot of talking, Robbie. Well, he's a junior, and the uh, Pac-10 Skyriders have picked him as the uh, preseason defensive player of the year in the uh, Pac-10 conference. As you take a look at Paul Wigan, who is starting his fourth year as head coach at Stanford. He has a record of 15 and 18 here. Uh, Garen Barris has moved from linebacker to the uh, uh, defensive line uh, playing an end position this year. He is an outstanding player. Marcus Dupree hit in the backfield and dropped for a loss on the play, but a flag is down. Now two flags come fly. Flags are down as Marcus Dupree was hit in the backfield. Pat Mitchell, number 75, defensive tackle, made the play, and that caught a roar from the crowd here. Now let's see as they talk it over what the call is going to be. Vance Carlson again is the referee from the Big A Conference. Walt Wolf, the umpire from the Pac-10. Tom Ellers from the Big 8 is the head linesman. Charles Kubin of the Pac-10, the line judge. Tom Ficken of the Big 8 is field judge. Gary Hurst and William Thayer, side judge and back judge, fill it out. Here's a look at the replay. Marcus Dupree takes the pitch and excellent penetration by the Stanford Cardinal. Mitchell. As Pat uh, Mitchell gets in there and makes the tackle, Marcus Dupree sacked for a loss on that play. That's the first game also for officials, Robbie. They're having an awful time trying to start this out and make a decision. They're still talking about it. I thought Vance Carlson retired last year. Oh, I did too. They, we had a couple goodbyes for him, but Vance must have liked it so much he's come back. He must have made him a great offer. He said, I'll come back. <laughs> Let's see what Vance has. A chop block against the Oklahoma Sooners, and it is declined. Now, the strength of the Stanford Cardinals uh, this year is their defense, and Garen Barris has... Uh, has uh, publicly talked about they are going to be able to stop Marcus Dupree and any other running back in the country but with nine starters back uh, they have no place to go but up because they were the worst defensive team in the Pac-10 conference last year in all categories. Gave up 428 yards a game. This is third down and 10. Oklahoma breaks the ball still in motion. Bradley to throw his first pass of 83. He's in trouble. Turns back looking for some help. Now runs up the middle. Now makes a cut inside. A flag goes down. Two flags tripping against Oklahoma. And Danny Bradley goes down, loses the yard at the 36. We had two flips on Oklahoma as Bradley was scrambling around. We'll take another look at Danny Bradley as he shows you tremendous quickness and versatility to avoid the rush. But so often in a first game like this, and when you have a quarterback that scrambles, you oftentimes end up in situations where you end up with clips. Danny Bradley sacked for a loss, and it's going to cost the Sooners uh, because they'll be penalized for clipping third down situation. Danny Bradley, though, as you notice, he rolled out to his right, and those are the types of passes that Bradley will try and throw this year. They're not going to make Danny Bradley drop back uh, eight or ten yards and stand there and stay in a pocket and try and throw because that's not the strength of his passing ability. Says a lot about that young man, Robbie. When the Sooners announced their four captains for the season, Danny Bradley was one of them. He really talks a great deal about leadership, Chris, not only on the football field, but off the field as well. He wants to be the first one in the classroom. He wants his teammates to follow him there. And these are the two penalties that Oklahoma has had already this year. These are the 
the kind of things that Coach Switzer is concerned about. On paper, the Oklahoma Sooners are a much better football team, but when things like this happen, you put the, yourself in a hole and you give the Stanford Cardinal a, uh, a chance to capitalize on your mistake. Derek Shepard, the freshman out of Odessa, Texas. One of three Shepherds who played here was in for Oklahoma on third and 37. Buster Rhymes, the outside. Buster makes a move inside at the 40. At the 45, that's going to be it. Oklahoma will have to punt. On third and 37 as Bradley completes his first pass. And the Oklahoma punt unit will come on. And again, a big question mark. As here comes Darren Ataya, the young, untried freshman. He's looked super in practice, but it's a little different in game situation. Buster Rhymes makes an excellent move here on Sauterland to get away from the linebacker. But then the Stanford defense is there to stop the play for a short yardage and Darren Italia has to come on and punt. He has really had an excellent spring and fall but he's never done it in a game situation so we'll just have to wait and see what happens to it. Fourth down and 31 Oklahoma. Ataya gets a punt. It is a low smile. Bounces 20. 15. Picked up at the 12 yard line. Oh he drops the football. Scramble for it on the sidelines. Did it get out of bounds? Yes. Stanford will keep it as Emil Harry started up the field and had everything with him but the football. 44 yard punt. For the freshman's first effort, just a three-yard return and fine coverage downfield. I think the Sooners, if Darren Atayi can kick the ball 44 yards every time and come back with a three-yard return, I think the Oklahoma coaching staff will be completely satisfied with that. <laughs> Excuse me, David Culver will be doing the uh, place kicking and field goal kicking for the Sooners this year. Emil Harry goes split to the left side. They put a flanker to the right side and then put it back in motion as Cottrell. Goes inside the handoff, nothing there. Kevin Scott gets just a couple of yards. The Stanford started near its own 11-yard uh, line. Defensively for Oklahoma, the All-American Ricky Bryan, number 80. Darrell Goodlow, 46. The men up front, as you see, Steve Cottrell. 1982, behind John Elway, Cottrell had just nine passes. Completed three of those for 25 yards, one touchdown. Did not have an interception last year in his nine attempts. Second down, nine Stanford. Cottrell wants to throw. Looking downfield, the rush is on. Outside, it is overthrown. Over the head of the intended receiver, number 23, the senior Eric Mullen. Once again, uh, sophomore nose tackle Tony Casillas was in there putting the pressure on Cardinal quarterback Steve Cottrell. Take another look at it from ground level, and you see Casillas come in from the left side of your screen. The throw intended for Mullen's overthrow. Cottrell now, Robbie, 0 for 3. That is not quite in the Stanford tradition. And you haven't seen Contrell really drop back in the pocket and stand there like Elway or yeah. Steve Dills. He's going to drop back four or five steps and throw quick patterns. Harry Mullins goes split wide left. Stanford on a third and nine. Send it back in motion. Now they send off to the right side. Cardinal Dean to 20 for a first down. The throw is overthrown incomplete. The receiver, Mike Palmer, slipped as he tried to come back for the ball. Boy, I tell you, Cottrell threw it on a rope, though. And once again, watch the bottom of your screen, number 92, Tony Casillas, whipping his man, getting his arms around Cottrell. The pass was thrown behind the receiver, incomplete, so Stanford once again is forced to be in a punting situation. Last I heard, Tony Casillas could bench press the west side of the stadium. That's, That's right. He is so <laughs> strong. That's exactly right. Gosh. Great football uh, prospect for the Sooners. Now you see the punter, a sophomore. Trip Harden. Tulsa's East Central High School. I know the Cardinals there will be proud of him. Buster Rhymes is deep. Now Scott Case falls back on fourth and nine. We've had uh, one first down so far in the game. That was Oklahoma's. The kick goes out of bounds at the Oklahoma 42-yard line. Ten minutes and 25 seconds left to play in the first quarter. And we are scoreless. It is the Sooners nothing, the Cardinal nothing. And we'll be back in a moment with a first down at their own 43-yard line, and Marcus Dupree tried to go outside left, was knocked down on the play by John Bergren, the defensive in 85, and Mike Wyman, defensive tackle 79. So Marcus has had three carries, and two of those have been negative yardage. Well, that offensive line has to do the job up front, and uh, the only player they had to really replace up front was Dr. Death, Steve Williams, so that is a veteran group, but Dillingham and Randolph have really not played there that much. Eric Pope and... Uh, uh, Sidney Dodd were projected starters, but Randolph and Dillingham won the job. 
Bradley, Bradley keeps outside 50, 45, Bradley, 40, Bradley, 35, Bradley, 30, first down, Oklahoma, Stanford, 25. Kenny Bradley showing some of the speed and quickness that have gotten the Oklahoma coaches so excited. And while that was the big question mark about Oklahoma, that has now been a race, 34-yard gain. Uh, there is no doubt that Danny Bradley is a better runner than passer, and he shows some of that running ability right here as Stanford uh, right cornerback Eric Price had to come from a long way back and chase Danny Bradley down. 34-yard pickup, first down for the Sooners. Leading the way downfield, number 58, sophomore right guard Tim Randolph of Midwest City. First and 10 at the 24. This is Dupree. Dupree hitting the backfield, shakes him off. Still on the sideline, now is knocked out of bounds as he gets near the 21 or 2-yard line. Not much running room for Marcus on that short side. Dave Wyman, middle linebacker, 92, Try made the hit on Dupree. Excuse me, Chris. Trying to run off the left side to the short side of the field behind tackle Brent Burks and Paul Parker. They are both returning starters. Parker, a preseason All-America pick, uh, is the best offensive lineman as you take a look at the Sooner, or the uh, Cardinal coaching staff, Paul Wigan in his fourth year here at Stanford. Dupree, four carries for just eight yards. Second and eight at the Stanford 22. The pitch, Dupree trying to go outside and nothing there again. Marcus is piled up and thrown for another loss on the play, making the first contact with left cornerback Kevin Baird, 48. Charles Hutchings, the free safety, 46 are in there. Stanford sent everybody on the play. It is now third and 10. Marcus missed the entire spring football practice because of a hamstring injury. And uh, as great a back as Marcus Dupree is, if there's no place to run, you're not going to run. And uh, the right side of the offensive line getting beat on that particular play, Marcus didn't get in the yardage. Six cardinal red shirts were on Marcus Dupree there. And you see Marcus. Nine yards on five carries. Third down, 10 Oklahoma. And motion Steve Sewell, top of the screen. Take the handoff to Dupree. Here comes Danny Bradley at the 20, at the 15. Danny trying to get the first down. It's going to be close. He stepped out near the 14. That's where he needed to be, but he may be a little short. Nine yards, we're calling it right now. Let's see. This won't show up in the stats, but when the defense moves over to cover for a possible handoff to Marcus Dupree, that opens up the other side of the field for an excellent runner in Danny Bradley, and he is just short of the first down. Fourth down, short yardage, Oklahoma. As you see, Sooner captain Danny Bradley, offensive captain along with Bradley is Paul Parker, the outstanding senior left guard, and defensively, Scott Pace for the Oklahoma Sooners, along with linebacker Jackie Schiff. Or rather, Ricky Bryan, I should say. The Sooners easily with the first down. Bryan, Case, the defensive. As Bradley keeps and gets the first down, and Oklahoma is inside the Stanford 10. Sooners were lined up in the wishbone that time, Chris, and they will use that formation more in the non-conference schedule than they will in the conference schedule because they want to make sure that the opposing teams have, have prepared themselves for the wishbone, and they'll use it in short yardage situations and goal line situations. 8-10 left to play in the first quarter. It is still scoreless. Oklahoma first and goal at the Stanford 9. Pitch back to Dupree. Dupree shakes the tackle at 10. Oh, forward about the 7, and it's pushed back there. Dave Wyman, 92, the middle linebacker, is in on the tackle for Stanford, along with the outside linebacker, Tom Breel. So a couple of yards for Dupree off that right side. As you look on to Paul Wiggins. Cardinals were 5-6 and six last year in, in Wiggins' first year in 1980. Stanford was six and five. They were four and seven and 81 and five and six last year, 15 and 18 overall for Paul Wiggins, who is a graduate of Stanford. Paul Close is split left for Oklahoma. They're in the wishbone. Danny Bradley keeps the ball. Bradley to the five. Bradley to the three yard line before he is spun out of there. Dave Wyman, number 92, along with Charles Hutchings, 46, and Garen Parrish, number 80. Next is Bradley down there. It'll be third goal to goal, Oklahoma. From the, just outside the Stanford three-yard line, Buster Ryan, number four, checks in. This drive started at Oklahoma's own 43-yard line, so they're working on a 57-yard drive here. Tillman Dupree, as you look at Barry Swifter, he watches with us on third and goal from the three. In motion, Steve Sewell, top of the screen. The pitch, Dupree, Dupree, stacked up as he gets to the two-yard line. Boy, and they are keying on number 22. Vaughn Williams, a strong safety. Two-time first-team Pac-10 was the man that made the contact. It's fourth and goal, Oklahoma. Well, you hit it right on the head. They are really keying on Marcus Dupree. 
And he has, uh, has said that he wants to be the first sophomore to rush for 2,000 yards and win the Heisman Trophy, but I'll guarantee you Marcus Dupree is more concerned about winning a Big 8 championship than he is about 2,000 yards, so now a field goal attempt. Another big question, David Culver has never kicked a field goal for Oklahoma. Did not get one last year. Culver from the 10, 20-yard field goal is good. The cover. The young sophomore from Tahlequah gets Oklahoma's first points in 1983 with a 20-yard field goal. Six minutes and eight seconds left to play in the opening quarter. And Oklahoma gets three. Oklahoma, on the strength of a 20-yard David Culver field goal, leads this football game three to nothing. Kataya, there he is. The young freshman will be kicking off. Stanford sends Thomas Henley back deep, standing at the uh, goal line, as you see there. Kevin Scott also back there with him. Six minutes, eight seconds left to play in the first quarter. And so far, Robbie, I've got to say, I've been a little surprised. Maybe this uh, change from 3-4 to 4-3 has helped Stanford more than we thought. They have whipped Oklahoma up front for the majority of the play. Yes, they have, and some of that Oklahoma offensive line, primarily D Dillingham and Randolph, are young, so they've got some things to learn here in the opening ballgame. Ataya kicks deep. Thomas Henley at the goal line. Good hang time as well. 10-15 and goes to the 18-yard line before he is knocked down there. Young freshman linebacker, number 42, Paul Miliazzo, redshirted in 82 from Kansas City, was down to make the hit. We've got a, a lineup change, Chris. They've either, they're either changing jerseys on Ataya or else Tim Lasher is doing the kicking off for the Oklahoma Sooners, but I'm to be honest with you, I haven't heard Lasher's name mentioned as a, as a kickoff person, so oh, we'll, we'll have to check on that. Did a nice job, though, if that was him. <laughs> Cottrell, first and ten. Stanford, their own 18-yard line as they flip the tight end. Jim Primer bringing to the left side, hand off in the backfield. Nothing there as Kevin Scott took the hand off. Thomas Benson, 38, was there, as was Kevin Murphy, the Big 8 defensive newcomer of the year last year, number 39. Jackie Schiff is back in there, 49. He's one of the last to get up. Last year, the uh, Stanford Cardinal averaged more than 400 yards a, a game on offense, but they only got 100 of it uh, on the ground, and they're 0 for 4 in passing today. Now you saw that Oklahoma scoring drive that has given them a 3 0 lead as we approach five and a half minutes left in the opening quarter. Second down, eight, Stanford from their 20 yard line with split backs. Cottrell to throw, Slater to put the rush on, they throw back the other side. And with the football is Scott, and he gets a lot of attention. Good coverage by Oklahoma there. Outstanding effort by the senior All-America, Rick Bryan. And Stanford throws a great deal to their backs as you take a look at Cottrell looking to the left, but then throws back to the right as he sets the screen up. Bob Slater in his face. Alvin Scott, or Scott, uh, Kevin Scott makes the reception, and look at Ricky Bryan come in and make the tackle. Third down and five. Stanford has yet to convert a third down, has yet to get a first down. 4.45, time left in the first quarter. Ball in the 23, Stanford needs the 28 for a first down. The rush is on, so to a man wide open. He's short of the first down, though. Excellent play by young Jim Rockford. Replacing Brian Hall at left cornerback. Rockford, who's played so many positions at Oklahoma. Receiver, tried him at quarterback, put him back on defense, and he stopped Stanford short there as Rob Moore the fullback coming out of the backfield could not get the yardage. It's fourth down. They'll have to kick it away. OU secondary coach Bobby Proctor is really going to be on the hot seat this year until the, the Sooner secondary proves that they can handle uh, uh, coverage against the pass. And I know he's uh, proud of the effort Rockford turned in there as it forces Stanford into another punting situation. Stanford at their own 27 yard. I don't believe they've been past their own 30 so far in the uh, first quarter. Elvin Lindblad doing stats. We'll check with him. Have not, he says. Oh, low snap. Harden has trouble picking it up and does get it away. Nice job by Trip Harden. Rhymes at the 35. Buster at the 40. Buster slips and falls at the 40-yard line. Three minutes, 45 seconds left in the first quarter. 39-yard punt by Harden. Five-yard return by Buster before he slipped and fell. And Chris Weber, 98, was there to cover him. So the Sooners will have it again. And again, they've had great field position throughout this uh, first quarter, Robbie. Well, the last uh, this is their third possession, and the last time they were able to take it 57 yards and got a, a field goal out of it. But you're right. Start with excellent field position as Danny Bradley brings the Sooners up again. Tillman Dupree in the backfield. 
Oh, check it. Not Dupree. It's a young freshman as the pitch goes back outside of the 40 to the 43-yard line was Earl Johnson, the freshman, 5'11", 200 pounds, from Dallas, Texas. He was redshirted last year, Chris, as you take a look at Danny Bradley, who looks over to the sidelines. Galen Hall, the offensive coordinator, calls all the plays for Oklahoma. He is up in the press box, and Danny Bradley really likes that because he thinks the world of Galen Hall as an offensive mind as Buster Rhymes comes off the field. And uh, Danny Bradley will take all the calls from the sidelines. He does have the opportunity to check off at the line of scrimmage if he doesn't like the way the defense looks. Nothing wrong with Marcus Dupree. They're just giving Johnson a look here. Second and eight. Head up the middle. There goes Tillman as he flashes to the 50-yard line and across. And that's some of the great speed they've been excited about with this freshman from Tulsa Edison, 5'11", 205, number 34, Spencer Tillman gets eight. Coach Switzer said that if Spencer Tillman had been in Marcus Dupree's position last year, he could have had probably the same kind of stats. That, that's the, the way they think of uh, Spencer Tillman's running ability. Out, outstanding person. He went to the coaching staff last year and said, I want to be redshirted. I don't think I'm ready to be able to handle all this. So he spent a year learning, and he's an outstanding young man. First and 10, Oklahoma to 50. Danny Bradley to throw. Has the man open. Buster Rhymes, 50. 45. Buster loses the football as he goes out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Uh, if you're going to lose the football, that's the place to do it. Just drop it out of bounds. Well, they have said that is Buster Rhymes' probably best position and where he'll probably be looked at as far as professional football. That's exactly right. And as you can see, Bradley throwing on the run. Rhymes makes the catch, tries to, to juke his way past the defender. The ball bounces out of bounds. Sooners retain possession. Second and short yardage. He'll need two on second down as Ryans gets eight. Kevin Baird, 48, ran him out of bounds. Oklahoma at the Stanford 42, 238, left to play in the first quarter. In motion, Steve Sewell, top of the screen, in the middle, Tillman, and he runs into some Cardinal jerseys there. Spencer Tillman stuffed in the middle there. It'll be third down still. Oklahoma needing a couple. John Bergman, 85, a defensive end of South Bend, Indiana, was one of the first to hit Spencer Tillman. Again, there's Nothing wrong with Marcus Dupree. I'm sure the Sooner coaches are just pulling him off, give him a little rest, uh, let him look over the situation. We have that pregame temperature is uh, in the 70s, but it seems a lot hotter down on the field, Robbie. It is a grass surface. Well, I was down there earlier today, and it was hot early this morning, so you can imagine what it's like down there now. Third and one, pitch back goes to the young running back from Dallas, Earl Johnson, the freshman, gets the first down for Oklahoma. Garen Veris, number 80. <laughs> Defensive end, Dave Wyman, 92, middle linebacker on the stop. But not before Johnson. Boy, he has quick feet. Gets that same kind of start a Kenny King used to get. They're really high on the talents of Earl Johnson, and he's going to play a lot today. Uh, Coach Switzer said that early on before the, uh, you know, during the week uh, before the ball game, just uh, because it's hot first game of the year, and they want to give, uh, keep fresh players on the field. Center send a man in motion. Bradley goes to the corner. Pitches to Johnson. Johnson spun down and nears the 30-yard line as Dave Wyman, middle linebacker, made the tackle along with Eric Price, the right cornerback, 27. And there's some of the famous Sooner option football. 124 left in the quarter. Oklahoma on the march. And as good as, as good as good as Stanford's defense thinks it might be. They don't have an opportunity to practice against the speed of Oklahoma running back, so it's very difficult for them. And, you know, and it was difficult for Oklahoma to prepare for the Stanford defense only because they changed from a 3-4 to a 4-3, and they had no film to look at of Stanford. So the Sooners are kind of playing it by ear here early on. Sooners second and two at the 30. Pitch back to Johnson. Johnson first down Oklahoma as he is knocked down around the 25-yard line. Less than a minute to play now in the first quarter. Matt Sutherland, number 47, made the head as you watch again some option football. Just straight pitch out of the eye formation to Earl Johnson, and his speed takes him up front as uh, Booger Parker out there in front leading the blocking. Paul, one of the offensive captains who mentioned along with Danny Bradley for the season. Ryan and Case, the defensive captains for the year. Earl Johnson's now got 12 yards and three carries. 40 seconds, clock running left in the quarter. First and 10, Oklahoma, Stanford 24. Spencer Tillman finds a little hole somehow and goes down to the 20, maybe just inside it. Boy, there wasn't much room there. Spencer Tillman kind of ran sideways for Tom Briel, 90. John Bergman, 85. We're able to bring him down, a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Tempers are beginning to flare a little bit out there, Chris, as Paul Parker and uh, Dave Moronic. Stanford uh, had a few words with each other after that play. I wouldn't want to mess with either one of them. That's right. <laughs> Five seconds. Let's see if the Sooners get this play off before the quarter ends. Nope. I don't think Danny Bradley's thinking about it. 
that is the end of the first quarter here at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California. The Oklahoma Sooners on a David Cover 20-yard field goal have a 3-0 lead. Oklahoma 3, Stanford nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this. They've run 23 plays as they lead the Stanford Cardinal 3-0 at the end of the first quarter. First thinking along of Robbie Robertson as we welcome you back to Stanford Stadium on this opening Saturday of the college football season for most teams around the nation. Chris, I've really kind of been impressed with the Sooner running game. They have been able to play the ball control offense. The Sooners have six first downs today. Stanford does not have a first down yet. Danny Bradley is hit on both of the passes that he has attempted for 13 yards and Bradley is the leading rusher for the Sooners at the end of the first quarter 44 yards on five carries some of the fullback Earl Johnson the tailback as Steve Sewell goes in motion Danny Bradley up the middle there's Spencer Tillman and Tillman goes near the 16 yard line it'll be third down and short yardage maybe a couple for Oklahoma defensively for Stanford Mark Andrew 93 made the tackle Sidney Dodd and Eric Pope are on the right side of the Sooner offensive line for this series and they opened up a big hole there as you see the Sooners have 105 yards on the ground today and Stanford has six yards on the ground as far as passing is concerned for Stanford Steve Cottrell is two of six for two yards Buster sorry, six yards Buster Rams comes in it's split in Steve still in motion fakes the full back Danny Bradley makes the pitch this is Johnson 10 Johnson the five the freshman from Dallas, Earl Johnson in Oklahoma has their first touchdown of the 1983 season. There you see some of over 6,000 Sooner fans that made the trip here to the San Francisco Bay Area. Danny Bradley does an outstanding job here as Tillman throws a good block and look at Breel and Andrew. They wrap up Bradley, but he makes the pitch at the right time to Earl Johnson. And does it look like he smells pay dirt? Yes, sir. <laughs> Takes it into the end zone. First collegiate touchdown for freshman Earl Johnson. David Culver, 8 of 9, an extra points of 82. Scott Case will hold. Culver, oh, kicks on a line, hits the post, and bounces through. <laughs> so David Culver will take that one. And Oklahoma leads it 10-0 now as we just got underway here in the second quarter. 14-17 left. Give the Sooners one more point. Oklahoma 10, Stanford nothing. The kickoff, you see there, 10 nothing Oklahoma. Robbie, a little more about the freshman Earl Johnson. 5'11", 200-pound freshman out of Dallas, Texas, a red shirt uh, last year. And the Sooner coaching staff likens him to former Oklahoma Sooner Kenny King, who now plays for the Los Angeles Raiders. He's the same type of player. Uh, can play fullback or tailback, but they're running him at tailback now. Jerome Ledbetter will be the backup fullback to Spencer Tillman. But they sure do like the running talent, and they he showed why. On the 16-yard touchdown run, to give the Sooners a 10-0 lead, 14-17 left in the first half. Still has to work on his blocking a bit, as does Spencer Tillman, but they're both freshmen, still kind of learning the system, and the Sooners get ready to kick off again, now working on a 10-0 lead. Well, 31, the jersey number, says it's Tim Lasher. Now, we don't know if we've had a jersey change for a tie or not. We'll try to confirm that, but by now we'll stay with the jersey number. Now, that's got to be a tie. <laughs> I can't believe we missed him all during spring and fall practice. As you see, the ball taken by Henley, and Henley is buried before he can reach the 15-yard line. Oklahoma white jerseys down there in a hurry to make the hit there. Leading the way for the Sooners, Jeff Hake, a reserve defensive end, number 47, was down on the hit. Great deal of emotion for this Oklahoma football team, Chris. Uh, I was talking to defensive coordinator Gary Gibbs yesterday, and with the veteran ball club that they have, you don't need to get them pumped up to play a football game. They are ready because this is the last time around for many of them. First and 10 Stanford at their own 15-yard line is Cottrell looking to get something going for the Cardinal offense. Head right away as he caught the football was Mike Tolliver and Brian Hall whacked him. The Sooners junior left quarterback, 6'2", 202 pounds. The Stanford offense is a ball control offense using the passing game. As you take a look at the American flag, you can see the wind picking up. Stanford working with the wind now. And head coach Barry Switzer feels like Stanford's going to complete 50% of their passes today. As you take a look at the scoring drive, 60 yards, 9 plays, a 16. That should be a 16-yard run by Earl Johnson. Oh, a loose football and diving on it for Stanford was Thomas Henley. 
as he had some trouble handling the football there, lost it. Quickly covering him was Danny Wilson for the Sooners. Just to finish my thought there, Chris, Coach Switzer expects to with Stanford to complete 50% of their passes, but he wants them completed in front of the defensive <laughs> back and not behind the defensive back as ha happened so often last year. Third down and 10 Stanford. They need the 25 for a first down. They are still looking for their first first down of the game. We are 13 minutes left to play in the first half. Send a man in motion, Mullins, Cottrell back to throw, got some time, Cottrell throws incomplete, intended for the All-American candidate, Emil Harry, he dropped the ball, no way he would have had a first down, and Stanford has to punt again. Well, there were four Sooners around the intended receiver there, as we take another look at it, and this is one of the few times that Cottrell has dropped uh, straight back. The pass is there. But as you can see, the Sooners are there also. Kevin Murphy, Keith Stanberry, two outstanding veteran players. And Stanford has to punt again. As you said, Chris, they are still without a first down. And we've got 12.50 to go in the first half. Trip Harden will be back to punt again. Harden has punted three times for a 39-yard average so far in the first half. Buster Rhymes is deep. Harden. Kicks it deep, and Buster Rhymes takes it over his shoulder at the 32. Buster at the 40. Buster dances away at the 40. At the 45-50. Here he goes. Goodbye. 35-30. 25-20. Nobody will catch him. Buster Rhymes. Touchdown, Oklahoma. A 53-yard punt. A 68-yard return. And Buster Rhymes has scored the center's second touchdown of 83. And you won't believe who Buster Rhymes juked to get away from this. This is unbelievable. Buster Rhymes the punt at his own 32 and watch who has to stop him right here Garen Barris and Buster Rhymes gets away from him down the sideline and then just one man to beat and Buster Rhymes goes into the end zone touchdown the Oklahoma Sooners 88 yards on three returns for Buster Rhymes the extra point attempt is blocked it is no good it is blocked it's coming through for Stanford number 15 Dwayne Hamilton, also Don Stubblefield, 89 were there. The extra point is no good, but Oklahoma leads it 16 to nothing with 12.34 left in the half. Stadium, there's going to be a major renovation here as they're going to be host of the Super Bowl in 1985. They say it is Lasher kicking off. Robbie, I've looked through the Oklahoma press guide. I've looked through our 2 deep here. I've looked in the Oklahoma roster. The only thing he appears on is the travel roster. I, I'm well, that, I just tried to step next door and uh, confirm that myself, Chris, and uh, evidently it is the freshman Tim Lasher who is doing the kicking off, and uh, we apologize for the mistake, but we were told before the ball game that freshman Darren Atalia would be doing the punting and the kicking off, but that obviously is not the case, and Tim Lasher's done a fine job, so uh, Sooners just have a little more depth in the kicking <laughs> game than they thought they did, I guess. Lasher ready to kick off with Oklahoma leading 16 to nothing. Lasher to the three-yard line. It is taken there by Thomas Henley. Henley, oh, is really whacked at the 19-yard line as he came down. It was Jeff Hake again. Defensive end number 47. who was one down there in a hurry for the Sooners. So again, Stanford starts inside their 20-yard line. We'll have Elvin kind of show us where they've started position-wise in this football game. They have not, as yet, as far as I know, been across their own 30-yard line. They do not have a first down. They have a total of 12 yards of total offense, Robbie. Six passing and six running. But this team can strike in a hurry. Cottrell from his own 19-yard line. Back to pass again. A flag is thrown. Man wide open and caught at the 37-yard line. Emil Harry. But a flag is down. Stanford has started this football game at the 28, the 24, the 19, and the 18-yard line. Looks like preliminary signal holding against the Stanford Cardinal. Well, this is their fifth possession, uh, Chris, and I've got them at the 28, the 24, the 18, the 15, and the 19. So we'll take a look at it from ground level, and Cottrell has Emil Harry wide open, but as you can see, that pass was completed in front of Jim Rockford and not behind, I mean, uh, Hall, so uh, in front of him, not behind him, but it's going to be called back. It is holding on Stanford. Steve Cottrell, by the way, is uh, an outstanding pitcher on the Stanford baseball team. 
He has a career record of 18 and 6 as a pitcher for Stanford. And the, the Stanford Cardinal was in the College Baseball World Series this year, won uh, one ball game up there, and Steve Cottrell was the winning pitcher. He is 3 of 8 for 7 yards today. Not a great start. 16-0 Oklahoma with 12-14 left to play in the first half. Stanford after the penalty is first and 15 at their 14-yard line. Cottrell with split backs, goes with a draw play, and he is hit and dropped before he can get back to the 16-yard line. Fine play by the man you expect to make fine plays, number 80, Ricky Bryant. Talked to him before the ball game today, Chris, and he said that the Sooners were not concerned one bit about the rushing game, but it's kind of difficult for that defensive line because here's what happens when you play against a team like Stanford. You rush, rush, rush all day long trying to get to the quarterback, and then they come with a draw play. But Ricky Bryan was right there, shows why he's an All-America and was the Big 8 Conference Defensive Player of the Year last year. No gain in the last play. Second and 15, Stanford. They put out three wide receivers. One back as Cottrell again makes a deep drop to throw. Bryan is in his face and Ricky misses it. Cottrell tries to scramble and he won't get far. Got up to about the 19-yard line. Ricky Bryan missed a great sack opportunity. Thomas Benson, 38, finally made the linebacker play head to hit. Ricky Bryan has had an awful lot of honors in his career, but the most important thing for him as you see him go right over the back of Steve Cottrell is to win a Big 8 championship. He has never done that in his years at Oklahoma and that preys most on his mind. Paul Wicken looking down going, what are we going to do now? <laughs> I don't know if he's saying that or not. I, yeah, I made that up. With third down and 12, he may be saying that. <laughs> 10 minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the first half. Stanford needs 12 on third down, rushes on, Cottrell looks, he throws, he's got a man open at the 25, at the 28-yard line, oh, he had a chance at a first down, did Jim Timer, the senior tight end, but instead of turning up field, Bobby, he went lateral, and you can't beat Oklahoma speed, when you turn lateral, they're going to get you, and they did, it'll be fourth down, it'll have to punt. And John Truitt, from his defensive end position, gets good pressure on the backside on Cottrell. But once Clymer gets the ball, and he's a senior, and that's only his third catch in oh, his career. Look at and there Rockford. you see the Sooners swarm and push him back. It is fourth, no first down, punt time for Stanford. Jim Rockford, the little guy, really put a pop on him there. And Kevin Murphy then finished him off. So again, it is Trip Harden. We've talked more about him than we have Cottrell. He's punted uh, four times already. Buster Rhymes will be deep at his own 30-yard line. Buster, last time we had this situation, punted it, and uh, Rhymes picked it off and returned it all the way for a touchdown, 68 yards. A little confusion on the part of the Stanford Ball Club, and they're being penalized five yards for delay of game, for, so Harden just has to kick it a little farther now as Buster Rhymes moves up a couple of yards, getting ready to field the punt from Trip Harden. We'll see where Oklahoma is starting with their field position. It has been excellent throughout this first half. 9.35 left to play in the half. The clock is running. The Sooners are leading 16 to nothing over the Cardinals. Stanford so far without a first down. Harden on the punt. Buster Rhymes to the 36-yard line. Buster looks for the wall. Cuts back the other way. Cuts back the other side. Stiff arms one man. Now he's got a wall. 35. Buster at the 40 and decides to take a walk out of there. Kevin Bed, the left cornerback, escorted them out. He ran about 40 yards, but picked up only four yards. So it was a 42-yard <laughs> kick, four-yard return. Oklahoma's had tremendous field position throughout the first half, though, Robbie, and it's been a big factor in their 16 points. Well, they've uh, started at their own 26, their own 43, their own 40, and then the last time they scored, they scored on the 68-yard punt return, and now they start at their own 40-yard line. It'll be better than that. We've had a flag on the field, and Stanford has been called for an illegal block, blocking uh, behind, and so it is going to cost the Cardinals some yardage, and Oklahoma will be starting, Robbie, uh, right up around midfield. Well, any time that you get a chance to start your, your offensive series in the other guy's territory, the coaching staff feels that you have to come away with some points. So Oklahoma, uh, the call is clipping against Stanford. So the Oklahoma Sooners have an excellent chance to get some more points on the board here with 9.13 to go in the half, and they already lead 16 to nothing. The Oklahoma Sooners 
excuse me, the Oklahoma Sooners have 137 yards total offense, 124 of it on the ground. Marcus Dupree is back in, first and 10 at the Stanford 45-yard line. Danny Bradley keeps, goes to the corner. Bradley snakes his way across the 40-yard line and gets about five yards for the Sooners. Charles Hutchings, the free safety 46, forced him out. So Dupree is back in there. Maybe a little time for Marcus to collect himself. Seven carries, nine yards. He, he opened the ball game with a nine-yard carry, and since then has gotten nothing, as you see, penalty yardage so far in the contest. Sooner's been penalized once uh, for 26 yards, Stanford twice for 20 yards. Second down play for Oklahoma. Give Bradley six on the last carry, and they call it second and four now. Oklahoma at the Stanford 39-yard line. High backfield. Spencer Tillman and then Dupree pitch to Dupree and Dupree at the corner at the 40 at the 35 and a flag goes down a flag was thrown right at the uh, freshman fullback Spencer Tillman Dave Wyman the middle linebacker made the stop on Dupree and a holding penalty is going to be called on Oklahoma another mistake for the Sooners which will push them back away from the Stanford goal line, but again, they ran to the short side of the field, and the strength of the Cardinal uh, team this year, as we said, is the defense, and it's really tough to run to the short side of the field, and now the Sooners are penalized back to the Stanford 40, uh, we'll call it the 47-yard line, holding against Oklahoma. Nine minutes, one second left here in the second quarter with Oklahoma leading 16 to nothing. There you see Marcus Dupree, and not Dupree statistics so far. Well, that can happen, uh, but he is uh, built like a tank and runs like a rocket. And he can pick up 86 in a hurry, uh, as Nebraska fans might remember last year. So we've got a long way to go. Center, second down and 12. Take the hand up to Dupree. Bradley wants to throw, and it is intercepted. Kicked off by number 45, Vaughn Williams, as Bradley threw it right to the strong safety. Again, Vaughn Williams, a two-time first-team Pac-10 player a veteran safety man and he made the interception and that's the first turnover of the football game well, uh, Vaughn Williams along with uh, Garen Ferris are the two best defensive players for Stanford and you can see why number 45 has twice been an uh, all Pac-10 first-team selection he and he has moved to the free the strong safety this year from the free safety spot but that is not new to him he played there as a sophomore Cardinals this is the first time they've been across at home 30 the 34-yard line, they did it on an interception as Cottrell calls the signals, makes the pitch back, fakes the reverse, and with the football running outside is Kevin Scott, and Scott is knocked down as he crossed the 41-yard line to Stanford. A little razzle-dazzle there as they fake the reverse. Kevin Scott, 24, with a carry. Kevin Scott was a red shirt last year, so he hasn't played, uh, has no running statistics, and as you see, he fakes the reverse and Kevin Murphy, number 39, and Keith Stanbury, 19, come in to make the hit, run him out of bounds. First down. Cardinal second down and three. Head off the fullback, breaks the tackle, and gets close to the first down. Kalui Park, out of Kailia, Hawaii, 6'3", 220-pound junior, on the carry there. 40 left to play in the first half. If you look at the uh, Hawaiian, Kalua Park. Sounds like an amusement park, doesn't it? <laughs> Stanford had to replace all their running backs from a year ago, and uh, Park did not play much at all last year, but he's an outstanding blocker. Just doesn't, be, just doesn't get to rush with the ball very much. It ran for 45 yards on 19 carries last year. Now you see the difference there between Stanford's first down as Vance Carlson puts the football down, looks like about five chain links away from the Cardinals' first first down. 8.40 left in the first half. It'll be third down and one for Stanford. Vance Carlson winds the clock as you look along the Stanford sideline. Third down and one. Power back formation for Stanford. In the backfield, he didn't get it. He did not get it. Kevin Scott was buried in the backfield by the Sooner rush of Bob Slater, 68. Kevin Murphy, 39. And it's fourth down. Are they going to punt or what? Oh, he's sending the punt team, and they're not going to like this. Come on, Paul. You're down 16-0, baby, and your job's on the line. 
Well, I'll tell you what, with eight minutes to go in the first half, I don't think you want to take any chances on giving the Sooners field position in your own territory. So Paul Wigan, the head coach at Stanford, has decided to punt the ball away in hopes that his defense can perhaps force a turnover in Sooner territory and have a better chance of scoring. Trip Harden will be punting for the sixth time in the first half. Oklahoma has punted only once, and now the uh, penalty for a delay of the game, and the crowd boos more. I, and that, I, the kicking game is so important in, uh, in this game, Chris, and that's going to upset Coach Wiggin terribly. The last two times, the uh, Stanford Cardinal have been penalized for delay of game in the in the punting situation. So the specialty team's coach is uh, going to be talked to at halftime, I guarantee. And Buster Rhymes goes on. Uh, uh, no, that's not Buster Rhymes. That's Derek Shepard yep. back there for the Oklahoma Sooners. Buster's had four returns for 92 <laughs> yards. They're going to give him a rest. Yeah, give him a rest, right? There's, There's Derek Shepard. Derek Shepard. Yeah. Had a couple pretty good brothers uh, preceding yeah. him at the university. Sure enough. He's a walk-on. Woody and Daryl Shepard. There's the punt away. Derek Shepard at the 10. 15. Derek, 20. 25. Shepard, nice return. Up to the 28-yard line. And the Oklahoma offense will take the field again with 7-10 left in the half. Shepard had an excellent fall practice. A 53-yard punt, 17-yard return. And then late in the uh, drills, he got cracked in the ribs, and they thought it might have been a, a bad injury, but it, obviously it was not, and the little guy is ready to play. The Sooners lead it 16 to nothing, 7-10 to go, as Oklahoma goes on offense from their own 28-yard line. Then a 19-yard field goal by Culver, a 16-yard run by rookie tailback Earl Johnson, and a 68-yard punt return by Buster Ryan. Bradley up the middle, there's Tillman at the 35, at the 40, Spencer 45, Spencer to the 50-yard line, first down Oklahoma as a rocket from Tulsa Edison High School. Gets loose, Eric Price, the right quarterback, brought him down, but not before a gain of 24 yards. Look up the middle. He is quick, I guarantee you, Spencer Tillman, 5'11", 205 pounds. He is a real blue chipper, a red shirt last year. He was a high school All-America and player of the year his senior year in high school, and he can play either at tailback or fullback. He, as a matter of fact, he does a great imitation of Coach Switzer's walk. He, he's an incredible person. <laughs> Seven carries, 42 yards today. Leading carrier for Oklahoma. Bradley on the corner. He's going to keep it. The 50, the 45. Looking to pitch there. Dupree at the sideline, but he stepped out of it. Oh, look at Marcus throw a shoulder into the defensive back downfield. Good heaven. He hit Eric Price, 5'9", 180-pound Price. I tell you, they might book him for a mugging there. Well, that's, that's uh, too bad. Eric Price doesn't even get a chance to make a tackle there, and he has to take a blow like that. A guy that's built like a tank and uh, runs like a rocket. And Danny Bradley does a good job here as he reads the defense and then makes the pitch at the last second to Dupree, who steps out of bounds, as you see, and then just to make sure, and Price oh. steps in. <laughs> Dupree lifts him yes, up sir. off the ground. First and 10 <laughs> Sooners at the 32-yard line of Stanford as the Big Red is on the drive again. This is Dupree, right side, 30, 25, Dupree, 20, Dupree, 15, runs over a man and goes to the 13-yard line. First down, Oklahoma. There are not many players in this country that can tackle Marcus Dupree one-on-one, -on -one, and you saw a good example there as the sophomore from Philadelphia, Mississippi, picks up a first down for the Sooners, and it took four red shirts to bring him down. 18-yard gain, that is his biggest, Robbie. Well, he'll have a lot of big gains for, before this season is over. That's just one of many to come, I'm sure. At least the Sooner coaching staff is hoping for that. There you see Marcus picking up some yardage there. Bradley, first and 10, Oklahoma, at the Stanford 14. The pitch, Dupree, the left side this time, 20, the 15, oh, buries his head and goes through about three red shirts to take him down to about the six-yard line. Von Williams, a strong safety, and Joe Kane, a freshman linebacker at 6'1", 200 pounds. That's a mismatch. Well, I really like the way Vaughn Williams plays as Paul Wiggin, the Stanford coach, looks on. Uh, he is an outstanding performer, a preseason All-America candidate, and he hits like a linebacker, but he runs like a defensive back, and he really is one of the stabilizing forces for the Stanford defense. Paul Clewis goes split right as Oklahoma. Now sends Steve Sewell to the top of the screen in motion. Tillman hit at the line of scrimmage, loses the football. It looks like his Stanford has it. Spencer Tillman tossed up the football, the freshman. 
dropped it right around the Stanford seven-yard line, and the Cardinal defense holds. Mike Wyman put the lick on him, and there's the second turnover for Oklahoma. One at reception, and now their first fumble of 83. Mike Wyman put the hit on him and ended up recovering the fumble as well. And there are a pair of Wymans on this Stanford ball club, and they are both outstanding players. Uh, Mike is a defensive tackle, and his brother Dave is a middle linebacker, and they are both outstanding prospects. So back to work, the Stanford Cardinal attack. At their own eight-yard line, first and ten. Dave Cottrell, the senior, still the quarterback for Stanford. And he's going to throw out of his own end zone. Brian on the chase. He throws deep downfield, and it is caught. A great catch by Emil Harry. All the way to the center, 41-yard line, and that gets the Stanford fans to their feet. 51-yard pass. Well, Emil Harry is just a junior, and he is the deep threat on this Stanford ball club as Cottrell goes into the end zone, throws it deep, Hall on the coverage, but he never looked back to see where the ball was. He was trying to stay with Harry, who has great speed, and Harry made an outstanding catch. It was an excellent throw. That's their first first down of the game. 5-14 left in the half. The Sooners look like they were going in for a touchdown. Now the defense is going to get to work as Cottrell. Looks to his right, now throws out of the backfield, and knocked down at the 36-yard line was the fullback, Rob Moore. Well, the turnovers have hurt the Sooners twice. They were in Stanford territory and had opportunities to, if not a touchdown, perhaps get a field goal, but they've turned it over the last two times, the interception by Vaughn Williams, and then the fumble by Spencer Tillman, and now Stanford gets the big play, and they are now in Sooner territory, trying to get on the board here with... 5.07 left in the first half. It is second down and five Stanford at the Oklahoma 36-yard line. Cottrell has hit four of his last five passes to the seniors starting to warm up now. In motion goes Eric Mullins to the top of the screen for the Cardinal. Cottrell again back to pass. Pressure on, throws, and it is overthrown. Good pressure by the Sooners. And again, it was young sophomore Tony Casillas, the nose guard. Overthrown intended for Mike Tolliver. One of the things the Sooners wanted to work on defense this year was to get a better pass rush, and they they made a pretty good effort there. And Cottrell, being only 5'11", uh, it's tough for him to throw over the big defensive lineman. He got that one a little too tall. So the Sooners doing a pretty good job up front. They have not made many substitutions up front, Chris, and I'm kind of surprised at that because pass rush is the hardest part of the game for a defensive lineman. It is third down and five. Stanford at the Oklahoma 36-yard line. He's near the 30 for the first down. Cottrell pressures on. He throws. He's got a man, and it is caught first down for Stanford at the Oklahoma 28-yard line. Mike Tolliver, number 26. The uh, senior from Lancaster, California, made the reception. He caught 30 passes last year from Elway for 491 yards. Darrell Goodlow coming in, but Stanford does a good job of picking, up, picking him up. And the completion is made. Stanford's got another first down. Eight-yard gain on the play. Stanford, first and ten now at the Oklahoma 27-yard line with 4.45 left in the first half. See Cottrell starting to warm up some here. And again back to throw. Cottrell throws back to the weak side. Looking for some running room, and he's just tripped up there. Good play by the center defense coming back. It's Kevin Scott, 24, the ball carrier. Danny Wilson, number 98. One of the Sooners to get over there as Paul Wiggins paces the sideline. Gain of five, second down five for Stanford. The Stanford ball club runs their offense similar to if, if many of our viewers saw the Thursday night football game between Minnesota and San Francisco. They just try and get you six, eight yards with that passing game. They did pick up, of course, the big play to, to Harry, but that's the only one they've completed that way. Stanford at the Sooner. 23-yard line, even five yards. Head off inside, nothing is there. And who is there for Oklahoma? Number 80, Ricky Bryant. Also, Daryl Goodlow, 46, and Kevin Scott, 24, never had a chance. There just won't be many teams that'll be able to run the football well on Oklahoma this year. So Stanford is going to have to stay with that passing game, but they have, they have to feel like uh, they can't let that defensive line just tee off on them all day on a pass rush. So they've got to put in some of the running plays to try and keep them honest. But Ricky Bryan's been around a while, and he sniffed that one out and stopped it. 
Statistically, now for Stanford, 109 yards of total offense, 90 of which has come through the air as Cottrell has improved his passing stats to 8 of 14. You see Steve over there talking to head coach Paul Wiggins. Wiggins uh, with, well, the crew cut, and I guarantee you the only one in the stadium. <laughs> Uh, Paul Wiggins is 48 years old. He's going to turn 49 on November 18th, which is just one day before the final game of the year for Stanford. The game, as they call it out here. I guess we would be remiss, Chris, if we didn't talk about the game last year. You know, this Stanford Ball Club, 5-6 and six last year, until the final game of the year against California, where they lost on that incredible five-lateral kickoff return touchdown for California. They had a chance to go to the Hall of Fame Bowl last year but that game kind of did him in there and of course it is the most talked about thing out here in a long long time well all across the country the the uh, the trombone player who got hit in the back yeah. on that deal he's become a national celebrity he's <laughs> gone all over the country talking about it and i understand that they uh, they made a farce of it during a basketball game when california and stanford played in basketball the bands ran out on the <laughs> basketball court <laughs> fun this, stuff this band is wild you'll see him here at halftime third and eight stanford at the Oklahoma 25-yard line. Cottrell to throw. He's got Goodlow in his face, and there comes Brian. And, no, not Ricky. Let's see who was in there for Oklahoma. Danny Wilson. Loss of 13. Darryl Goodlow, Danny Wilson. That's just another strength. The Sooners have some depth in that uh, defensive front. Danny Wilson really can be considered a starter. They have oh. three tight ends, and you see uh, defensive ends, and you see Wilson get the quarterback sack right there. Fourth and long yardage for Loss Stanford. of 11. It's fourth and 19. The football at the 36, and they're going to try a field goal, and this guy, believe me, can do it. They're going to put it down at the 43-yard line, a 53-yard attempt. Mark Harmon last year was 14 of 20. His longest career field goal, 59 yards against Purdue. Harmon, nope, no chance. Low and to the left as he mishit that one. And there goes Stanford's chance at any scoring, it looks like, here in the first half. 2.47 left, and Oklahoma will take over the football, and they will have it first and 10 at their own 36-yard line. So Stanford on their first scoring opportunity of the game, misfires there. Stanford has a good kicking game, and Harmon and uh, Trip Harden Harmon hit a 48-yarder last year and hit 14 and 20 field goals, so he's certainly capable, but he pulled that one to the left, and the Sooners go on offense with 247 left. Marcus Dupree at tailback. Tillman the fullback, Bradley number one at quarterback, and Steve Sewell goes in motion. They fake to Tillman, looking for Dupree. Pitch to Dupree at the corner, 35 stiff arms a man, trying to get away. Now loses the football, and it stays in bounds, and Stanford has it. Oklahoma, another turnover. David Wyman, 92, is the man who hits the football, knocked it away. Eric Price, 27, the right cornerback, recovered it. And the Sooners have been hit with their old bugaboo turnover. Well, spent, uh, Marcus Dupree has no place to run here. And as you see, he puts a stiff arm, and as he tries to turn around, Vaughn Williams knocks the ball loose. And Stanford, it, it gets a good bounce as yeah. it stays in bounds, and Stanford's able to capitalize on it. So now, with 2.38 to go, Stanford's got a chance to get on the board here. Eric Price recovered. You see the Sooners with three turnovers to none. And now Stanford back on offense. Cottrell at the Oklahoma 26-yard line with a first down. 2.38 left in the half. Cottrell looking to throw as Brian hit him. He throws the end zone. 20. And I'll tell you, Cottrell just got that off before Ricky Bryan hit him. And the Stanford Cardinal has scored on a 26-yard touchdown strike with 2.31 left in the half, set up again by an Oklahoma turnover. Mix up in the secondary because there was nobody anywhere near Henley, as you can see him there in the corner of the end zone. Makes the catch. Good throw by Cottrell. And Stanford is on the board on a 26-yard scoring play. Mark Harmon will set the extra point for Stanford. It's good. Two minutes and 31 seconds left to play in the first half. And with a lot of help from Oklahoma, Stanford has scored its first touchdown of the season. 16 to 7 now, Oklahoma. The Sooners with three turnovers. One interception by a Danny Bradley pass. A fumble by Spencer Tillman inside the Stanford 10. And then a giveaway fumble by Marcus Dupree. 
at the Sooners 26 yard line. Let's see the touchdown again. Steve Cottrell uh, takes a, a hit as he gets the ball off, but Henley jumps up and makes the catch. And as you can see, there are no white shirts around there playing defense. So the Stanford Cardinals gets a roar from the crowd as they get on the board. So the Sooners will go back on offense, and you know that the coaching staff's a little bit concerned here, having all sorts of opportunities to continue to move the football, but the last three possessions have ended up in turnovers. Three possessions in a row. A sad Marcus Dupree sitting along the Sooner bench, getting a few pats on the back from teammates, but this may gear him up for a big second half, Robbie. Well, I'll tell you what, it really puts more pressure on him, Chris, because all over the country, if Marcus Dupree doesn't rush for 200 yards a game, everybody's going to say, oh, he's not doing the job. You know, he can't be a Heisman Trophy candidate. Uh, Cottrell, 7 of 9 for 110 yards in this quarter. So Cottrell is uh, getting the right arm going. So Marcus Dupree is down, uh, but it's unfortunate that uh, people are going to be all over him if he doesn't have a, an outstanding game every single week. But I really don't think that makes any difference to the Sooner coaching staff as long as OU wins. Mark Harmon posts it to the end zone and he's still going to take a knee there. And the Sooners will start at their own 20-yard line and they'll have two minutes and 31 seconds to try to get that score back. What a turnaround. I mean, it looked like Oklahoma was about to march in. And you see the very quick scoring drive on Stanford's part after the Oklahoma fumble. Doesn't it's take long when you can throw the football. Looked like Oklahoma was going to be 23-0 in this football game until a turnover started hitting it. I think Oklahoma has turned it over their last three possessions, haven't they, Elvin? And maybe close that to Danny Bradley an interception. Spencer Tillman a fumble inside the 10, and then Marcus Dupree. Three straight turnovers. Here's Danny Bradley. Sinners working their own 20. Steve Sewell in motion, handoff to, no, cuts it. Thanks to Tillman, hand to Steve Sewell on a flanker around, and Wayne Hamilton, the right cornerback, forced Sewell out of bounds. Steve Sewell, this is coming home for him at San Francisco, California product. Got some friends here in the stands uh, watching him play. Danny Bradley, you saw two of three, uh, hitting on two of three passes. The Sooners averaged about uh, nine, about 10 passes a game last year, as you see, 225 left in the first half. They want to throw the ball about 15 times this year, uh, but, uh, you know, when you're able to rush the football up and down the field, there's really no reason to do that. Bradley pitches to Marcus Dupree. Dupree hit in the backfield, still moves ahead for about four or five yards. Tom Briel, number 90, made the stop there. The clock will run. Marcus does not look like he is running with reckless abandon to me today. Uh, Chris, maybe he's just trying to feel his way to the hole, but he does not look like he is uh, running as hard as perhaps we have seen him run last year. He's made some contact out there. He saw, saw a big stripe of white on his red OU helmet. From well, he'll draw on the crowd. Stanford. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> 150 left as Oklahoma faces the third down and six at the Stanford 24-yard line. Fake to Dupree. Bradley wants to throw. Got a man wide open. Shepard has it at the 34-yard line and a first down Oklahoma. Young Derek Shepard of Odessa, Texas. Woody Shepard, Darrell Shepard have also worn the Oklahoma Crimson and Cream. Eric Price, 27. Matt Sutherland, 47, made the tackle for Stanford. And the Sooners have a first down. The clock is running with a minute and a half left in the first half. And the Sooners... Let it go. The OU is all three of their timeouts, by the way. Tillman, Dupree in the I formation. As soon as they've used the wishbone only twice that I can remember in the first half. Bradley, to throw deep. He's looking for Buster Rhymes. Rhymes! Did he have it? No. Nice job defensively by Eric Pike, the junior right cornerback, number 27. Rhymes and Derek Shepard are the real deep threats for the Oklahoma Sooners, but Price was right there, stride for stride with Rhymes, so... Good defensive play. Rhymes is slow getting up down there on the field. He is still down on his knees as the Sooner trainers come out to take a look at Buster Rhymes. But we take a look, another look at it. Danny Bradley goes deep and, and throws it deep. But excellent coverage as Buster Rhymes can't hold on to it. Eric Price almost had the interception. And you see Bradley's statistics throwing the football. But Danny Bradley is also the Sooners' leading rusher. Six carries, 66 yards, one for 34. Second down and 10. 
Bradley in trouble, pulled down back around the 31-yard line by John Bergman, number 85. He could not get to the corner to get help from Marcus Dupree. Bergman is an outstanding player for the Stanford Cardinal. Two years in a row now, he has been uh, a academic All-America. He's a 3-9 student, and there you see him fight off the block and pull Danny Bradley down. Outstanding player and student. Good student athlete. He's the perfect example of student athlete. Third down and 13 for Oklahoma at the 31-yard line. They need to get up to the 44 in their own territory for a first down. Bradley pitched to Marcus Dupree. Hit and down he goes. Go check it. It was Johnson. Johnson had checked in. Earl Johnson, he is wrapped up by Garen Veris, number 80. Their defensive end, and now Stanford has stopped the clock as Oklahoma will be forced into their second punting situation of the first half, and Stanford with 22 seconds left in the half. Sooners had to punt on their very first possession of the game, and then they scored the next three times. They got their hands on the ball on the field goal by Culver and the 16-yard run by Johnson, and then the 68-yard punt returned by Rhymes, but then it's been all bad news for the Sooners as they got hit with an interception and then a couple of fumbles, and now they have to punt it away again. And this is Darren Ataya, the freshman, back in punting formation for the Sooners. 22 seconds left, and the way Stanford can throw the football, now they can score in 22 seconds. Emil Harry, Steve Lemon will be deep as you look at freshman Darren Ataya. And they've got a freshman snapping the ball, too, uh, uh, Chris. Kevin Atkins, freshman from Midwest City there in Oklahoma City. And he's a left-handed snapper, and that makes a difference because the spiral on the football is a little bit different. So, good snap by the freshman and the tie-up. Not a very good punt. Low punt takes a good sooner roll. Though. Look at this. 30, 25. It'll look good in the stats, but Ataya knows he didn't quite do the job on it there. So now Stanford's got a long way to go. They're going to take over on their own 24-yard line, 46-yard punt with the roll for Darren Ataya. So Stanford takes over with 11 seconds left. The ball on their own 24-yard line. Oklahoma, 137 yards of total offense in the first half, 124 of that on the ground with 11 first downs to just two for Stanford. But three turnovers have kept this from really being a sooner route in the first half. Cottrell has three receivers out. 11 seconds left. Cottrell looking to throw. Rolls out of the pocket and it is caught at the 45-yard line and knocked out of bounds there. Are they got to keep the clock going? No, they stopped it. As it was Eric Mullins, number 23. Senior who made the catch, Dwight Drain, 33, knocked him out of bounds. The Sooners have five defensive backs in there. Jackie Ship moves out of the lineup, and Kevin Murphy assumes a linebacker spot. That is Murphy diving for the ball, but he can't get it, and the reception is made. 23-yard pickup for Stanford. Two ticks left on the clock, so this will be the last play of the first half. Stanford just adding some stats right now. Two seconds left. First and ten at the Stanford 47-yard line. Again, three receivers are out. Cottrell being chased now by Darrell Goodlow. He's all back at his 20 and now just throws it away. And they're just going to say incomplete. They could have called grounding, but what the heck. <laughs> right. That is the end of the first half at Stanford Stadium. And the Oklahoma Sooners have been their worst enemy in the second quarter as they lead the Cardinal 16-7. End of the first two quarters, Oklahoma 16 and Stanford 7. We'll be back in a moment. First thing along with Robbie Robinson, we welcome you back to Oklahoma football 83. The Sooners lead the Stanford Cardinals 16 to 7. And we're just a couple minutes away from the kickoff of the second half. Let's take a look at the first touchdown by a freshman. Uh, the Sooners already leading three to nothing here, but the pitch goes to freshman Earl Johnson, who scampers 16 yards into the end zone for a touchdown. Johnson has rushed for 34 yards today on six carries, so he's uh, averaging better than five yards a carry. Earl Johnson taking over for Marcus Dupree, who has had a very slow first half to this point. Uh, 12 carries, 31 yards. Marcus' longest run in the first half was 18 yards. And also, he had a negative uh, figure of 17 yards in loss. Now, Buster Ryan. Now, the Sooners uh, increased their lead to 16 to nothing as Buster Rhymes takes the punt 
fakes out Garen Barris, and then races 68 yards down the right sideline and cuts back to the middle of the field and goes in for the touchdown. Rhymes also caught a couple of passes today for 15 yards, and that put the Sooners up 16 to nothing, and then disaster struck as the Sooners on their next three possessions had a pass intercepted, and they fumbled twice, and the second fumble was by Marcus Dupree, and it gave Stanford uh, the ball in Oklahoma Territory at the 26-yard line, and when you can throw the ball like the Stanford Cardinal does, Steve Cottrell had an excellent second quarter we'll talk about in a minute. He hooks up with uh, Thomas Henley for 26 yards and the touchdown to put Stanford on the board with 2.31 to go in the half, and that's the way the first half ended. Oklahoma out in front of Stanford, 16-7. to there you take a look at the first half statistics. Oklahoma with 11 first down, Stanford just four. The Sooners have 183 yards on the ground, 24 yards passing for 207 yards total offense. Stanford has just six yards on the ground, 136 through the year for a total offense of 142. Three big turnovers for the Oklahoma Sooners, and as you can see, the time of possession was pretty close, Chris. And uh, Steve Cottrell had an excellent second quarter after a not-so-good first quarter. He struggled not out of bottom in the first quarter, Robbie, and then came on to hit eight of 11 passes in that second quarter, and of course led him to their uh, touchdown. But you know, I was talking to, to John Brooks, the radio voice of the Sooners over here in the halftime break, and still uh, the feeling is that uh, you know if Oklahoma doesn't win this by three or four touchdowns, something's very wrong. I mean, this is the Oklahoma team that Barry Switzer came right out and said he thinks it's the best team Oklahoma's had since 1978. And may approach the 1975 national championship team. It's a senior dominated club. It has some of the greatest offensive weapons in college football today. But uh, so far, I think Merv Johnson will be a little concerned. His offensive line is not dominated, I think, the way they felt they would. They have had some problems up front, but the Sooners have come up with 183 yards on the ground. Just haven't gotten a great deal of output from Marcus Dupree. Kickoff goes through the end zone to start the second half. Mark Harmon drove that one deep, and so Oklahoma will take over first and ten in its own 20-yard line. Spencer Tillman will be at fullback. Marcus Dupree will be at the tailback. Danny Bradley will be the quarterback for the Sooners. Steve Sewell will be at flanker. Johnny Fountain at the tight end. And the uh, split in for Oklahoma. We'll wait and see if they live Buster Rhymes there or Paul Clewis as they break the huddle. Here come the Sooners, and it's Buster Rhymes, number four, who comes out wide left. Steve Sue goes wide right, and the Sooners from the eye in their own 20-yard line. Marcus Dupree, Dupree to the 25 to the 27-yard line. He went off the right side. Sooners uh, right side includes a sophomore, Tim Randolph, and a uh, junior, David Dillingham. John Bergren, Tom Brio made the tackle after a gain of seven for Marcus. The offensive lineup is just the same for the Sooners that started the ball game. Fontanetta tied in, Burks and Parker on the left side, Thomas at center. Randolph and Dillingham on the right side. Rhymes had split in. Bradley, Dupree, Tillman, and Sewell are the backs. Sewell goes uh, split left. Paul Clewis is in. He goes to the right side. Spencer Tillman has a hole and goes across the 30 for a first down for the Sooners to the 32-yard line. Tillman, the freshman out of Tulsa Edison High School. 24 yards has been Tillman's longest run so far. The longest play from scrimmage for the Sooners has been a 34-yard run by the quarterback, Danny Bradley. Tillman had 47 yards on uh, eight carries in that first half, averaging almost six yards a carry. Oklahoma has been charged with a timeout, as I believe it's Danny Bradley who's had to come to the sideline for some equipment work, and so uh, that does bring about a charged timeout in college football. And the defense for the Stanford Cardinal is the same that started the ball game. Bergen and Barris at the ends, Mitchell and Moronic at the tackles, uh, Briel, Wyman, Soderlund uh, at the linebackers, and Baird, Williams, Hutchings, and Price are the defensive backs as Danny Bradley has got his equipment squared away and is headed back for the Oklahoma huddle. There it is for the first and ten at their own 32-yard line. Just from those first couple plays, Robbie, it looks like a uh, no frills, just back to work sooner football. Well, that's the way they're going to play the 83 season. Uh, they moved from the wishbone last year in game four, the start of the I formation against Iowa State last year. And they will still use the wishbone some, but they are basically an I oriented football team now, and that's the way they're going to have to go. And so it's uh, bread and butter. Sooners on a first and ten at their own 32-yard line. 
Again, Dupree, he has a hole, 35, marks the 40, he's in the open at the 45 midfield. 45, cuts back inside at the 40, shakes the tackle, 35, and knocks down from behind at the 30. Now a flag goes down for a late hit. Mike Wyman made the tackle as Marcus Dupree broke open, goes 41 yards, and welcome back, Marcus. Yeah, that looked like the Marcus Dupree that we saw run last year, and the Sooners are going to end up with much more as we have a personal foul against Stanford for, as you called it correctly, uh, Chris, a late hit. But watch the strength of Marcus Dupree as he finds the hole. The left side of the line does a good job, and the Marcus Dupree gets there, follows a good block there, and just shrugs off Eric Price. And now the tank is running wild as he breaks away from Vaughn Williams. And now, finally, from behind, go, Dupree is brought down in the late hit Keep rolling, Daddy. Keep rolling, Daddy. against Stanford, and that'll tack on more yardage as uh, uh, Tom Briel, the linebacker, is called for the late hit. And the Oklahoma Sooners move deep into Stanford territory, and that's the way the Sooners want to see Marcus Dupree run. Alvin Lindblad tells us Marcus Dupree is closing in on the 1,000-yard mark in his career in his second season. He just needs 16 yards. He rushed for 905 yards last year, scored 13 touchdowns. Closing in on the 1,000-yard mark as Paul Wigan looks on. Earl Johnson has replaced Dupree. Give him a little blow after the long run. Oh, a collision in the Sooner backfield. Tillman runs into Bradley. Little mix-up there. Now Marcus has his breath. He's going to come back in as Johnson comes out Mike Wyman and on the stop for Stanford and Pat Mitchell 1341 clock running in the third quarter as Oklahoma as a second down and still 10 at the Stanford 14 yard line Dupree is in the backfield Derek Shepard in the lineup now as Steve Sewell comes off the field Fake to Tillman Bradley clock down he goes back at the 17 yard line and the Sooners lose three Garen Barris makes the tackle for Stanford. He is their premier defensive player. We'll take another look at it. Uh, Garen Barris, 6'6", 250-pound junior from Chillicothe, Ohio. And there you see him make the tackle. And uh, Barris has hopes of competing in the 1984 Olympics. He's a, a shot putter and a discus throw on the track team. Now that was a mistake, a freshman mistake, as Spencer Tillman missed the block on the end, and that resulted in the loss. Sooners are three out of seven in third down conversion flag goes down as they hit the pass and breaking free as buster rhymes and goes down to the two but a flag was thrown right around the line of scrimmage let's see what it's going to be it was the third and 13 play holding oklahoma it'll come back you can see danny bradley shaking his head in disgust and we'll take another look at it as danny bradley as you see rolling out and looking for a receiver and that's what bradley does best and he throws that ball pretty well buster rhymes makes the catch and some good moves to pick up good yardage but holding at the line of scrimmage it comes back and now it'll be third and long distance centers with three turnovers and now with three penalties for a total of a negative 46 yards had a shot of coach switzer on the sideline and paul wigan now giving some visual instructions to his defense. There you see the totals on penalty. Third down, 24. Oklahoma has to get all the way down to the three for a first down situation. Bradley looking to throw over the middle. That is Buster Rhymes, and he's pulled down to the 12-yard line. Nice pass by Danny Bradley, though. Charles Hutchings, 46, the free safety, made the stop. 15-yard gain on the play as the Sooners field goal team comes in on fourth down and four. Another good throw by Danny Bradley. Same play, just a little bit deeper as Bradley, not exactly a tight spiral, but it gets there and Buster Rhymes makes the catch. Bradley hit nine of 17 passes last year for 144 yards, and now Culver will come on to try a field goal. He hit a 20-yarder in the first quarter. This one from 30 yards out. Angle from left to right as David Culver hits the field goal. It's good. David Culver, who failed to make a field goal in one attempt in 1982, is two for two at 83. 11.41 left to play in the third quarter, and Oklahoma has expanded its lead. It's the Sooners 19 and the Cardinals 7. Chris yeah. Lincoln, Robbie Robertson, in Palo Alto, California, at Stanford Stadium is the Oklahoma Sooners. 
have increased their lead. 19 to 7. 11.41 left to play in the third quarter, and Stanford looking to get the football for the first time in this half. I know Coach Switzer and the rest of the OU coaching staff will be pleased to have three more points on the board, but I can't help but think they're a little upset by another uh, mistake. The holding penalty uh, that cost them uh, a first down deep in Stanford territory, so the Sooners had to settle for three instead of a possible seven. A walk-on from Plano, Texas, Tim Lasher. Hit this one a bit short. Picked up the nine-yard line by Henley, and Henley breaks a couple tackles, goes up to the 25-yard line, and that's where Stanford will have their first offensive snap of this second half. Henley scored the only Stanford touchdown that coming late in the first half as he took a 26-yard pass from senior quarterback Steve Cottrell. Boy, they've had some great passing quarterbacks here, haven't they, Chris? Uh, starting with... John Brody and Jim Plunkett, the uh, guy Benjamin, Steve Dill, and of course John Elway. They've had a bunch of great receivers here, too. I don't know a few of those for you. Cottrell, ready to throw, rushes on. Bob Slater has him, and he throws incomplete. Cottrell got it underway for Kevin Scott just off his fingertips. Good job by the veteran Bob Slater, a third year starter, second leading tackler among the down linemen, was 66 last year, and uh, watches rusher come 68 fighting off a block and uh, Cottrell does a good job look at that pass uh, on the way down almost hit his receiver Cottrell hit two of six passes for seven yards in the first quarter you take a look at the Sooner scoring drive 70 yards seven plays Culver gets a 27 yard field goal second down and ten Cottrell has some time throws deep in the middle wide open at the 45 yard line the 50 and hit by the way is Kevin Scott the sophomore, as he was wide open over the middle, 22 yards, and a first down for Stanford. We'll have to take a look at Thomas Benson. It'll be a little tough to find the linebacker because he get, the receiver gets way behind Benson, wide open, and Scott makes the catch, and uh, free safety Scott Case has to come up and make the hit. There's an excited fan following the action here. Lift your head up just a little bit, buddy. It's right out in front of you. <laughs> uh, they're laid back here. California cool. First and ten at the 48-yard line. As Cottrell looks to throw and is caught out of bounds. Emil Harry. Boy, he threaded that one nicely. Uh, it's a timing play, Chris. Strictly a timing play. The ball was in the air before Harry ever made his cut. Nice pass, nice catch. Take a look at Cottrell. Play action, looking. Now Harry has made his cut, and there's the ball right there on the numbers. Stanford with another first down as they've now moved into Oklahoma Territory at the Sooner 39-yard line. With the football, Kevin Scott, a halfback, and they've had no luck running against Oklahoma. For the day, Stanford has had six yards total rushing and we're going to subtract some from that as they have lost a yard on that attempt rob moore the fullback had the lead block there but it's kind of tough to block three sooners so scott had no place to to go so take a look at rick bryant as he paces along the trenches there as stanford comes out for a second long plug second down 11 stanford oklahoma 40 yard line Cottrell steps up in the pocket, hits the man over the middle, breaks the tackle, 35 at the 30, and a first down for Stanford. With the catch was flanker Mike Tolliver, number 26. He eluded one sooner over the middle, and then dove for the first down. Tolliver had 30 catches last year for 491 yards and four touchdowns. It's averaged more than 16 yards a catch, and he gets away from Jackie Ship right there, and again, Case tries to take his head off. And Tolliver dives for the first down. 13 yards on the pass play. And Stanford has it first and 10. Oklahoma 27-yard line. This is by far Stanford's best drive. 10 minutes left in the third quarter. Oklahoma leads by 12, 19 to 7. Over the middle of a middle screen and caught for a gain of about 8 yards by Kevin Scott, the halfback. Haven't seen the middle screen today, so Stanford putting in a, using a few more plays here in the second half that we haven't seen in the first half. It's obvious they feel like they can't run, so now it's all out passing attack. That play works quite well. Benson is there to make the, the hit. Nice job by Benson as he was blocked and still made the tackle. And then you see Coach Switzer and that 
famous one-knee physician. There he is. Nobody does it better. The winningest college football coach in America. 98 wins, 17 losses. And the outside trying to run and getting nowhere was Kevin Scott. There's Bob Slater again. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Mason High School made the stop. You know, maybe some of our viewers, Chris, are saying, you know, why don't the, the Sooners blitz more and try and put more pressure on that quarterback? You try and do that in obvious passing situations against a team like Stanford, but really for them, every down is an obvious passing down. Right. So it's, you just have to kind of pick your spots with you, when you think the blitz might be more effective. It might be better here down close to the Sooner goal line. It's third down and three. Stanford at the Oklahoma 20. Again, the handoff, and going to about the 16-yard line, close to a first down, is Kevin Scott, the sophomore halfback out of Bluff, Washington. And looks like he may have the Stanford first down. I'll wait until they unpile here. Now Vance Carlson is called for an official's timeout to bring the chains in. Kevin Murphy, Tony Casillas are in there on the tackles for Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Sooners will be home. Again, next, uh, we'll be home next week for their, their home opener against Ohio State. It is a first down for the Stanford Cardinals. Stanford goes on the road next week to take on Illinois. That will be a real uh, aerial circus <laughs> as uh, Stanford has got a, a quarterback factory going up there. They will be led this year by sophomore Jack Trudeau. As Paul Wigan looks on, first down play coming up for Stanford. 8.30 left in the third quarter. The Sooners leading 19-7 but Stanford's on the drive. Cardinal with the football on the Oklahoma 16 and a first down and 10. Receivers split wide left, flanker right. Cottrell fakes the handoff in the middle, has plenty of time, throws for the end zone, way over the head of the intended receiver, Emil Harry, incomplete. One of the changes that Oklahoma has made on their defensive team this year is to move Scott Case from a cornerback to the free safety. They feel like he is probably the best uh, defensive back and he was there along with Dwight, uh, Dwight Drain on the coverage, as you see Case and Drain there to prevent that completion. And uh, playing free safety for Scott Case just gives him a little more freedom to roam around and be where he needs to be, and he is doing a good job. Cottrell's update statistics. Second down and 10 from the Oklahoma 16-yard line. Cottrell throws it back out of the backfield and hit at the 12-yard line is the fullback, Rob Moore, number 33. Defensively, Scott Case, number 10, Jim Rockford, number 2, are up there for the Sooners. Stanford likes to throw to everybody, including the backs, and Rob Moore will go off the field now as Stanford substitutes. Carolina Park, 34, comes in at a fullback spot for Stanford. Eric Mullins, 23, is left. Mike Tolliver is in there at uh, flanker, along with Emil Harry. This is third down and six, Stanford. Cottrell to pass to the backside. He gets it underway, and it is intercepted by Scott Case at the five. Scott Case at the 10. Case, 15-yard line, drops the football. Did they rule him dead? Let's see. Yes, his knee was down. Oklahoma retains possession. Oof. The official was right there on it to say his knee was down. Oklahoma will retain possession, the first turnover for Stanford today. Well, this is one of the things that I talked to defensive coordinator Gary Gibbs about yesterday. He said the Sooners have to be able to take advantage of turnovers. You remember like last year in the Texas game, they dropped some possible interceptions. But Scott Case is right there after the ball bounces free. Scott Case is there to come up with the interception and returns it. The ball is whistled dead right there. Oklahoma takes over. Outstanding job. Our cameramen working very hard today. Good job with our production crew here. We're getting some great shots as Oklahoma's 83 season opener. Flags fly as the Sooners try to get a first down play underway. 7-18 to play in this third quarter. Oklahoma holds off the Stanford threat, and the Sooners are leading it 19-7. Eric Pope, freshman All-America last year. We've got offside Sooners. <laughs> Now, to get off sides offensively, you have to line up that way. <laughs> so that's a uh, young lineman's mistake there, probably. Paul Wigan puts his headset back on. 7-18 to go, third quarter. It'll be first down and 15 OU. Coming out is uh, Buster Rhymes. And to replace him is Paul Cluis. Steve Sewell goes out as a flanker to the left side. Clewis goes split right. Up 
the middle. Here goes Spencer Tillman at the 20. Tillman at the 25-yard line. Close to it before he is pulled down from behind. Tillman again gets there in a hurry. Spencer Tillman got to the hole, and as soon as he got into the uh, secondary, he was looking for the block from tight end Johnny Fontenet who was going to cut behind him, and that's one of the, the great talents of Spencer Tillman. He's got great peripheral vision, and when he comes out of that fullback shoot, maybe we'll take another look at it. As you see, Spencer Tillman, and look, he's looking oh. for Johnny Fontenet right now. There's Fontenet with a block that Spencer Tillman's brought down from behind. Great job by Paul Parker, the left guard, and throwing the opening there. 13 yard gain, Oklahoma needs two on the third down, and driving for it is the freshman, Earl Johnson. And Johnson across the 30 yard line. You can hear some of the uh, encouragement from the Sooners on the sideline there. Danny Bradley as well. That's one of the things I really like about Danny Bradley, Chris, is the fact that he not only talks about winning on the football field, but he gets his troops fired up out there. As you take a look at the OU cheerleaders uh, came out yesterday with the team. They're here enjoying the sunshine and a 19 to 7 lead right now. Danny Bradley really is a leader on and off the field. He'll, he'll have a good year for Oklahoma if he can stay healthy. Sooners first and 10 at the own 30. And after Earl Johnson, the freshman cuts back inside, and Johnson goes to about the 33-yard line. Defensively, Terry Jackson, defensive tackle, along with middle linebacker Mark Andrew on the stop. For Stanford is the freshman from Dallas. Earl Johnson gets three yards. Johnson's now got 43 yards on eight carries. Marcus Dupree, after that long 41-yard jaunt, is now the leading rusher for the Sooners. 79 yards on 14 carries. Again, Dupree just getting a little rest here. Hot day down there. Bradley, Earl Johnson cuts inside. Johnson breaks the tackle, 40. Johnson, 45-yard line, first down, Oklahoma. Boy, hard-running freshman from Dallas. Breaks out of the grasp of defensive end Terry Jackson who was the nose guard last year in the Stanford 3-4 defense and there are really two reasons why Stanford has changed from a 3-4 <laughs> to a 4-3 and the primary reason is because in the three years uh, now the fourth year that Paul Wiggins been here they have not had any success with the 3-4 and they didn't feel like Terry Jackson was really just big enough to be a true nose guard so they moved to a 4-3 defense put him at end they gave up gave up almost 30 points a game last year pitch back off the Johnson in the backfield they got him by job defensively by Tom Breel, number 90, the linebacker also there with Garen Veris, number 80. You see Veris. Had a little trouble getting up right now. Veris led uh, Stanford in quarterback sacks last year with nine, and you can see uh, Earl Johnson kind of drags him a little bit, but Veris comes up with the uh, tackle. Four minutes, 56 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Harris is down on the field, so we'll take a break with Oklahoma leading Stanford 19 to 7. Quarter with a second down and 10 Oklahoma. Harris left the field under his own power. Ernie Fisher, 59, a sophomore, is in now defensive end from Oklahoma. All right, broken arrow. Bradley looking to throw deep. Steve Sewell can't get it. It'll be third down and 10 OU. Vaughn Williams, 45, was out there defensively. There's Sewell, number 13. Somebody's losing streak is going to end today, Chris. Uh, Oklahoma comes into this ball game on a two-game losing streak, losing to Nebraska and then to Arizona State in the Fiesta Bowl last year. And Stanford comes into this ball game on a three-game losing streak. As you take a look at all Pac-10 performer Vaughn Williams, outstanding free safety for, or strong safety for Stanford Cardinal. Amazing thing, you know, Elway, of course, all-time MCA passing record, but his team's won just 16 games in three years, and he had only one winning season at Stanford. That tells you something about needing some defense. Third and ten, this is Steve Sewell on the flank of reverse. He's in trouble. That, well, play, that play did not develop the way it was supposed to. And it's Broken Arrow's Ernie Fisher making the stop on the Oklahoma team. I think we had a little bit of a bust right here as Bradley's looking for somebody to hand off to or fake the handoff to. Sewell ends up with a reverse, but Fisher is there to make the stop, and now it's punting time for the Oklahoma Sooners. With 4.05 left to play in the third quarter, Darren Ataya, who's punted twice for 45 yards. Again, he's not getting any height on the ball at all. Line kick right to Emil Harry, who made the fair catch at the
at the 27-yard line, just 28 yards on that punt for a tie, and he has just not gotten one up and turned it over today. No, and, and Coach Switzer talked about the, the performance of Ataya in fall practice where his hang time was like 4-7, 4-8, and he was booming the ball 60 and 65 yards, but it's a little bit different when you have to do it in a crowded stadium on a Saturday afternoon, and the freshman from Seminole is, uh, didn't hit that one very well. 3.55 left in the third quarter. It's first and 10 Stanford at the 27-yard line. Steve Cottrell, the senior, has gone all the way. Now first, look for a halfback pass. Emil Harry has put in looking to throw and nowhere to go, and he runs out of bounds. Emil Harry is their top receiver, All-American candidate, their best deep threat, and of course he joins a long line of great receivers out of this school. Stanford's produced guys like James Lofton, Tony Hill, Ken Marjoram, and of course, Darren Nelson. Well, the Sooners do an excellent job on pass coverage here. The pass is going to be intended for Tolliver, but Case and Hall had that play covered. There was no place for Harry to throw to. He runs out of bounds. Lost a yard on the play. It is now second down, Stanford and 11 from their own 26-yard line. Cottrell got a man open at the 31-yard line and pulled down there was Mike Tolliver. Oklahoma, Jackie Ship 49 and Dwight Drain 33. Ren on the stop. It'll be third down. Short yardage. Tolliver is a fifth year senior from Lancaster, California, 6'0, 175 pounds. He's averaged better than 17 yards a catch in his career. Stanford about three to four yards shy on third down. Cattell to throw the rushes on. He throws it. It's incomplete. Good defensive hit by little Jim Rockford on the fullback, Rob Moore. Rockford, 5'10", 180. Knocks the football loose, and Stanford will have to kick it away on fourth down. Well, that's what the Sooner coaching staff was looking for from that defensive secondary. And as you see, Rockford comes in and puts a good hit on Rob Moore. The ball drops loose and incomplete, and Stanford is forced into a punting situation. Good rush, good pressure as well from number 41, the Sooners defensive end, John Truitt. The Buster Rhymes is deep in single safety, and back to punt is Trip Harden, who was busy in the first half with six punts. Oh, beautiful spiral. Buster Rhymes at his 12-yard line. Rhymes at the 20. Not much running room. Buster, get out of there. 53-yard kick. Charles Hutchings, the free safety, forced him out. Buster really got hemmed in. Nowhere to go. And wisely got out of bounds. So the Sooners will start at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. <laughs> it's warm here in Palo Alto, California. Maybe, maybe yeah. he thinks it's raining. <laughs> maybe he wants it to yeah. rain. 19-7 <laughs> to 7, Oklahoma. We've had a very quiet uh, third quarter. Only a field goal by uh, David Culver. The only scoring is Danny Bradley. Marcus Dupree is back in there, weaves his way through a crowd and carries a couple up to the 25-yard line for a gain of five. Matt Sutherland, 47, was one hanging on to Marcus Dupree as Marcus Dupree goes over the 80-yard mark and for his brief career at Oklahoma is over the 1,000-yard figure. Clock running at two and a half minutes left to play third quarter with the Sooners lead of 12. Dupree, of course, set a new Fiesta Bowl record last year. He's got 87 yards today on 15 carries. Rushed for 239 yards in the Fiesta Bowl. Centers on a second down for the 24-yard line. Danny Bradley trying to get to the corner. He's in trouble. Down he goes. Back around the 16, 17-yard line. Good pressure in there defensively. Mike Wyman, number 79, the defensive tackle. A loss on the play of six yards, and the centers will have third and long. We'll take a look at, try and look at the right side of the Sooner offensive line as Barris gets in there to disrupt that play. And Stanford comes in and knocks Danny Bradley down. But that is showing some of the youth of the Oklahoma Sooner offensive line on the right side, and that is uh, Randolph and Dillingham. To me, it shows also a little bit of the experience of Danny Bradley. You know, last year he would have been jumping around and probably ended up losing more and made a bad play. He just laid down and took the loss. Third and 12. This is Marcus Dupree. Dupree trying to get outside at the 20. And is going to go to the 23, and that's it. Ron Williams, 45. The all pac 10 strong safety in John Bergren, the defensive end, made the hit on Dupree. And the Sooners are going to have to put it away. 
Oklahoma has a player down as some of the Stanford fans come to their feet. Carrying their defense as they have shut the Sooners down. Tim Randolph, 58. Sophomore right guard is the player uh, getting some work done down on the field. Take a look at the freeze carry. Well, yeah, Marcus looking for some place to run here and no place to go. Vaughn Williams wraps him up and gets some help and down goes Marcus Dupree and the Sooners are forced to punt. You know, everybody likes offense. That's what everybody talks about the most, but uh, by golly, it's defense that does the job for you. Panoramic view of Stanford Stadium. It's what Stanford has been really lacking in. As you mentioned, they've given up almost 30 points a game and 428 yards a game last year. Ataya gets a nice high spiral after they've been looking for, and the freshman forces Daniel Henry to make a fair catch. Stanford will have good field position, though, at their own 36-yard line with a first down in just one minute and nine seconds left to play in the third quarter. Take a look at Emil Harry. 41-yard punt that time for the freshman Darren Atiyah. Take a look at Cottrell's numbers on the day. He's hit on 15 of 26 passes for 189 yards and a touchdown. He's been picked off once by Scott Case. Cottrell's foot backfield behind him as Stanford works on their own 36-yard line. Coming to the final minute of the third quarter, Cottrell, plenty of time, throws it is incomplete. Scott Case drove a shoulder into the back of Emil Harry as he went up high for the try to make the attempt. It'll be second down and 10. Emil Harry had to go way up to get that one as Cottrell drops straight back, has several receivers, finds Harry, but see how high he goes up, and there is Scott Case, the free safety right there to put the hit on him as the ball goes through Harry's hands. Cottrell has that little uh, pat of the football release that John Elway liked to use. Harry's had three receptions today for 89 yards. Big play, man, for the Stanford Cardinal. Second and 10. Cottrell goes out, wants to throw back the other way, and no chance, out of bounds, and Ricky Bryant followed the play beautifully as the pass went to Rob Moore. Are they gonna call that complete? Well, you only have to have one foot in bounds in the college game, and I think perhaps but you got to have if, possession. Right, <laughs> right, you are. Right? If, if Rob Moore had control of the football, which I guess I guess he did, as we go under one minute here left in the third quarter, the Sooners leading 19 to seven. I guess now if Rob did catch it, which yeah. he did, it was a bad play because he lost two yards. <laughs> third down and 12. Stanford at the 34-yard line. They need to get to their own 46 for a first down here. Pressure on from Ricky Bryant. Ricky Bryant has got him back inside the 20-yard line of the All-American of Oklahoma. Withstood holding and everything else to finally get through there to make the drop on the play, and Stafford will have to punt a loss of 15 yards. You see some of the Sooner fans uh, cheering the approval, and they take a look at big number 80, senior from Coweta, Oklahoma, wrapping up Steve Cottrell and bulldogs him down a long loss and that'll force Stanford into a punting situation. 26 seconds left, and the clock's running here in the third quarter. Ricky Bryan's got both his brothers playing with him now. Three brothers the Bryan family has provided Oklahoma. Kind of like the Selmans, huh? <laughs> oh, a bad punt. A terrible punt by Tripp Harden. Let's see where they're going to mark it inside. Oh, my gosh, the Stanford 35-yard line, and this may be the break the Sooners need the punt. 15 yards. Well, the Sooners have made some mistakes today, and Stanford makes one in the kicking game right here. Only a 15-yard kick by Trip Harden, and the Sooners are going to have outstanding field position as they will start this drive with nine seconds left in the third quarter, and they start at their own, at the Stanford 34-yard line. And the Sooners have in there a tailback, the freshman Earl Johnson. Spencer Tillman all the way at fullback. Here's Earl Johnson, Earl Johnson to the 30, 25, 20, Johnson 15, Johnson 10, 5, touchdown Oklahoma with two seconds left in the third quarter. Earl Johnson sprints 33 yards for a touchdown down the left side and Oklahoma's got themselves another star back. Watch the right side of the Sooner offensive line pulling right there, 65. Woo. Excellent speed by the freshman from Texas, Earl Johnson, maintains his balance and goes in for the touchdown. Outstanding job 
on that particular play uh, for the o offensive line for the Oklahoma Sooners. Sidney Dodd pulled Brent Burks, the offensive tackle. They did a great job of clearing the way for Earl Johnson. 33-yard touchdown run. The Sooners looking for their 26th and 7th foot. They're going for two. Danny Bradley. Bradley rolls out, looks the end zone. Sewell drops it. Oh, Steve Sewell had it in his hands and couldn't hold it. It is incomplete, and the Sooners fail on the two-point attempt with two seconds left to play in the third quarter. Take a look at it. Danny Bradley rolling right, looking for Sewell all the way. Finds him on the back of the end zone. Sewell up, he's got the ball, and then drops it. So all the Oklahoma Sooners now lead 25 to seven, and there are two seconds left in the third quarter. There are some of the Sooner fans. More than 6,000 came out to follow the Oklahoma team here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Johnson now has 88 yards on 11 carries and a couple of touchdowns, a 16-yard run and a 33-yard run. Pretty impressive performance for the freshman. Oklahoma approaching the 400 mark in total offense, Robbie. 365, 326 yards of that on the ground. Might make Marcus Dupree work a little harder now. Wouldn't hurt. Marcus uh, has a ways to go to reach his 200-yard goal per game. He's got 89 yards today. Kick off, uh, moving it around, trying to get on it. Now Bradley Ford and finally going down at the two-yard line. Thomas Henley couldn't decide quite what to do. And when he made up his mind, it was too late. And coming down from Oklahoma was Tony Rayburn, a reserve defensive back. There he is, number 35, to make the tackle for the Sooners. Rayburn, a freshman out of Oklahoma City's Douglas High School. That's the end of the third quarter. 15 minutes to go as Oklahoma leads Stanford 25 to 7. The Sooner Cheerleaders of 1983. And they have something to cheer about as Oklahoma leads at 25 7. Boy, it'll be good to get in front of the friendly folks in Norman. It's the only what the Sooners' second hole or second road opener since I guess uh, 78. Right. Back last time they were out here. Also, these two teams will open the season next year, September 8th in Norman. That's how the uh, 1984 season will begin. And will the Oklahoma Sooners will probably get to see an outstanding young passer in sophomore John Pay. He is a freshman this year. They thought about redshirting him, but decided to go ahead and let him play. He's got a sore arm today as Stanford has to start from their own two. Cottrell, the senior quarterback, running play and got to the four or five yard line. Good hard running there by Thomas Henley, number 20. This has not been a very productive second half thus far for the Stanford Cardinal. The first time they got the ball, they took it deep to Oklahoma territory, but Scott Case came up with the interception. You should take a look at the scoring drive for Oklahoma, a 34-yard run by Earl Johnson. The second time Stanford had the ball, they had to punt, and then the third time was the punt of only 15 yards that Johnson then turned into a touchdown one play later. Second down, four for Stanford at their eight-yard line. Pitchback goes to Havana, and he is swarmed over there and knocked down around the five-yard line. All kinds of white-shirted Sooners were there. Danny Wilson, uh, 98, also in there for uh, Oklahoma. Jackie Ship, 19, Keith Stanberry, and Daryl Goodlow, 46. Hey, Van is a 5'9", 203-pound junior out of Ontario, California, and we've, we've got a Sooner down on the field. Jackie Ship, I'm not sure. That's yeah. the second time that's yeah. the ship has been down. Yeah, Jackie was uh, down in the opening play of the game, and now he's out here in the opening play of the fourth quarter. Third down conversion. Stanford has been two of nine for the football game. Oklahoma, four of 11. Sooners, 16 to eight. Their lead in first down, 365 yards total offense to 205 for Stanford. Paul Wiggins looks on, and Jackie Ship is being helped off the field. Now, Jackie Ship is closing in on a, a 
Sooner uh, school record, Chris. He is only 107 tackles away from the school record for linebackers, which is currently held by Darrell Hunt, who plays for the Houston Oilers. Uh, Darrell Hunt finished his career with 506 tackles, and uh, Jackie Ship only 107 away from that, and Ship already holds the single season. Uh, school mark for tackles with 182 back in 1981, but that's the second time he's been down today as you took a look at the hook OU. And that is the OU, and no other team has won more in college football since World War II than Oklahoma. The nation's winningest team, 79%. Penn State is second. Control the throw on third and five. He's trapped and almost goes down in the end zone. Now he goes down 60 for Oklahoma's defense. The Sooner defense puts points on the board. Tommy Flemings, 93, was back there. 41, John Truett was there. Also, Thomas Benson, 38, take a look at it. Take a look at the Sooners pouring through as Truett gets the first hand on him. Cottrell slips that tackle, but there comes Slater and Flemings, and down goes Cottrell. Add two more for the Sooners, gives them 27 as Jeff Deaton. Pats Cottrell on the helmet and says, tough luck, buddy. And take a look at Bob Slater on the Oklahoma sideline. Remember, Slater had that big safety in the Kentucky game last year and contributes on this one as Stanford will now have to punt the ball away as Oklahoma leads 27 to 7. You know, they talk a lot, and certainly Stanford deserves a great academic reputation, Robbie, but one thing I think people kind of overlook is the great football power Oklahoma's been. Not only are they the winningest college football team percentage-wise since World War II with 79%, but Oklahoma is second, second only to Notre Dame in producing uh, consensus All-Americans. 35 players have been named All-American 40 times since 1946. They're also well up there in academic All-Americans. Bud Wilkinson helped build that monster. You OU's, gotta, keep, you gotta keep feeding it, that's right? It. <laughs> OU ranks fourth nationally in academic All-Americans since 1951 with 18. So, some pretty smart fellows at Oklahoma as well. Well, it's a free kick choice for Stanford. They have elected to take the option with a punt. Nice high punt by Trip Harden. And here comes Buster Ryan, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40-yard line for Buster Ryan. Well, the Sooners will start with good field position again as they get a safety. Uh, credit it to Clemens and Slater and Truett and then... The Sooners will start at their own 40-yard line, leading 27-7, to 13-46 to go in the ballgame. So the Sooner defense has done a good job today, I think. They have. They've uh, knew that they were going to be thrown at all day long, and they have done a good job, tried to put as much pressure on Cottrell as possible. Marcus Dupree is in the backfield. And the handoff to Dupree, he goes outside at the 40. Marcus Dupree at the 45. Dupree goes up near midfield, gets it off eight, nine yards there, and he's closing in on the 100-yard mark, Robbie. That puts him at, uh, well, we'll see where they spot the ball. It looks like a nine-yard pickup to me, which will give Marcus Dupree 98 yards on 17 carries today. No touchdowns as Marcus goes off the field. Looks like he's looking over his hand there to get a little tape job or something as he comes off. Maybe and his mouthpiece. On his Earl Johnson. Here's some help with his mouthpiece. Up the middle, Spencer Tillman. Boy, he took a hard hit there. Now, did he fumble? Now, Stanford comes out with a football. We've had no indications official. Now, yes, Stanford has the football. Stanford gets the football. Mark Andrew, the sophomore. It was a delayed call. See if we can see what happened here. Spencer Tillman goes in the middle. Took a vicious hit. Look at that. Yep, there goes the ball. Good call. Ball knocked loose. Good hit by linebacker Matt Sauterland, and the ball came loose. That's the second fumble for Tillman. That is the fourth turnover today for the Sooners. Three of them fumbles, two by Tillman, one by Dupree, and Vaughn Williams came up with an interception. So Stanford's got it at midfield. And here comes the freshman, John Pay, the most heavily recruited freshman quarterback in the nation last year. Hands off the right side. The fullback, Park, goes up to the Oklahoma 45-yard line. John Pay, top prep quarterback in the nation of Atherton, California. He had 555 completions in 930 attempts for 7,646 yards and 80 touchdowns in his high school career. So they've waited a long time for him, John Pay. Here he is, 6'3", 195, just like you like your quarterback. Compared to Cottrell at 5'10", 185. Oklahoma jumps, flags will go in the air, handoff. And knocked down there is Thomas Henley. Flag was thrown to give Stanford a first down. 
12 minutes, 25 seconds left to play in this football game. Oklahoma has had four turnovers today, three fumbles, one pass intercepted. They've also been whistled down for four times in penalties, costing him 51 yards. In his senior year in high school, John Pay threw for 37 touchdowns. That is a California state record. And he threw a state record eight touchdown passes in a ball game uh, back in November 5th. And they say that uh, John Pay just has a brilliant future in the Stanford football program. Fits right into the mold with all the other great quarterbacks that have come here to Stanford. Oklahoma with a five-yard penalty against the Sooners. You see the totals there. And it's first down Stanford for freshman John Pay at the Oklahoma 40-yard line. Freshman has yet to throw his first college pass. How about right now? Bay throws out, and oh, it's dropped. Dropped by Mike Tolliver. Even like the Oklahoma fans were kind of cheering on that one. <laughs> he deserved to have his first college completion. Tolliver dropped it. That is not an easy throw. No, when you have to throw across the field like that, but a pretty good toss right there, and the youngster should be oh. one for one. Tolliver should go back and apologize to him. <laughs> Sorry, kid. So it is second down and 10. Stanford at the Oklahoma 40-yard line. Pay again to throw. Has time. Oh, great catch and a hard hit made by Scott Case and holding on was Greg Beatty and congratulations, Greg. <laughs> he really took a shot as Pay completes his first college pass. And Beatty is just a sophomore. He didn't have any catches last year, so that is his first college reception. And you get a great view of how Beatty has to pay for that reception as Scott Case really put a hit on him. And so now the freshman quarterback is one for two in his college career really a star of the future and as you'll notice he is a drop back quarterback he's not going to take three or four steps and look for somebody to throw it to he can drop down in the pocket now he doesn't like what he sees so he calls timeout and goes over to the sidelines 11 18 to go in the ball game oklahoma out in front of stanford 27 to 7. channel 34 the winner with more of the greatest movies all-time hits like Friday the 13th, Part 2, Proof that Terror Can Strike Twice. Escape from New York. Well, I guess you give up now, don't you? I most certainly do not. Nickelodeon. Love Story. Eyes of Laura Mars. And Murder by Death. I hope he knows how to stop that thing. Winning comedy series like What's Happening? Oh, Mrs. Hi, neighbor! Carter Country and Soap. And for the first time ever, Oklahoma 34 brings you OU football every week. Oklahoma 34, the winner. You sure were right about T-Mobile Homes. Of course I was right. How was I right? You said T-Mobile Homes could sell me a beautiful mobile home for about the same as my old apartment rent. And they did. Told you so. You said if I bought some T-Mobile Homes, I'd get a parking place right away because they have plenty of lots available. Told you so. And because I bought some T-Mobile Homes, I got a trip for two to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Free. I told you. You got what? <laughs> Adios, amigo. Well, you know, John Pay is going to be around here for a while. I'm sure Paul Wiggin hopes he will be, too. He is, <laughs> yeah, uh, the heat <laughs> might be on on Paul Wiggin as he is uh, in his fourth year, 15 and 18, uh, with a career. But Pay was a uh, high school uh, player of the year in many, many publications last year. And you take a look at Barry Switzer, the winningest coach in America, 98 victories in 10 years, 17 losses, three ties. Switzer's going to turn 46 uh, here coming up pretty soon, the Wednesday before the Texas game. Might be a nice birthday present. Well, if he can come out of here with victory number 99, how about trying for 100 against Ohio State? Boy, it'll be a dandy. Next Saturday in Norman, as usual, sellout. Third down, three, Stanford. 
They need to get to the Oklahoma 30 for a first down with a freshman John Pay throwing for it. Pay looking for some help. Now he's going to throw, and he's got a man. First down at the 18-yard line, and what a rifle of an arm to Emil Harry, number 10, the split in. Showed some good mobility, too, there as he gets back in the pocket looking for a receiver. No place to go, so he runs out of the pocket, and look at that rope, folks. Woo. I mean, a bullet. A if good catch by Emil Harry. 15 yards and a first down for the Cardinal. Stanford on the march now. First and 10 at the Oklahoma 18-yard line. Time left, 11 minutes and counting in this football game with Oklahoma leading by 20. Hey, that's the throw again. Getting some pressure. White drained badly. Mike Tolliver, 26, was by himself. And the freshman, John Pay, opens his college career with an impressive march and a varsity touchdown. Mike Tolliver on the reception, and again, Pay got out of that pocket looking for somebody to throw to. And there you see the tail end of it, and Tolliver makes the reception. Dwight Drain nowhere near to get involved in that play. And Pay has brought the Cardinal crowd to life here with 10.43 to go. And, you know, John Elway, the last time Stanford and OU played in 1980 there in Norman, threw three touchdown passes and ran for another one. Just a sophomore, the Sooners jump off sides. We'll see what, how, what they want to do here. The point after was good, but I'm sure the play was blown dead. But the Sooners knew who John Elway was when he came to stand to Norman and by golly, uh, Stanford's got themselves another fine-looking quarterback in freshman pay. Al, I say Oklahoma was drawn offside. The legal procedure against Stanford, so we'll take it back five yards, and Mark Harmon will have to try again for the extra point. Looking for the 14th point for Stanford. Now, remember, when you have a passing attack like that, and 10 minutes, 43 seconds remaining, Stanford nails this extra point. They are two touchdowns and two extra points away from being in front of this football game. And believe me, that has not been lost on Barry Switzer. The extra point is drilled through by Mark Harmon. Stanford has added its 14th point and with 10 minutes and 43 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter, Oklahoma's lead is cut to 13 at 27 to 14. Stanford will be kicking off and I know Oklahoma will be thinking about ball control and also about Marcus Dupree, who is just a yard shy of a 100 yard day. And we're still waiting, waiting for Marcus to really break the real big one. He has yet to get to the end zone. He broke one run today of 41 yards. He's also had one of nine and one of 18. And just a fascinating story on Marcus Dupree. Give me an idea of what he means to this Oklahoma football team last year as a freshman. In 34 plays, when Dupree was in against Arizona State, Oklahoma made 355 yards, scored 21 points, had no fumbles, and the team averaged 9.8 yards a play. The 39 plays Dupree missed with his assorted injuries in the Fiesta Bowl. OU had just 122 yards, five turnovers, no points, and average 3.1 a play. A valuable commodity for the Oklahoma Sooners, but we've seen some other depth in the running back department today with Spencer Tillman, if he could hold on to the football, <laughs> and Earl Johnson, who has scored a couple of touchdowns from 16 yards out and 33 yards out. 62,778 on hand today at Stanford Stadium. And Steve Sewell is had trouble holding on to the football today. Dropped the two-point conversion earlier and dropped the pass and now fumbles the kickoff around. Got a knee down and it'll be a touchback out to the 20-yard line. And here comes Marcus Dupree and the Oklahoma offense on the field. First and 10 Sooners at their 20 with 10.43 left to play. Sooners have 337 yards on the ground today. Stanford has 199 yards through the air. They only have six yards rushing four oklahoma backs have rushed for over 60 yards today dupree's got 99 tillman 66 bradley 61 and johnson 88 here goes dupree 20 25 marcus 30 marcus to the 33 yard line i think last year marcus did not have many fumbles either no I, I, you're absolutely right chris that run puts him over the 100 yard mark for today he now has 112 yards on 18 carries he has fumbled once today. Spencer Tillman, the starting fullback, the freshman from Tulsa, has fumbled twice. 
First and 10 of the 32 as Marcus gets 12. He's now at 111 yards. Wishbone, Oklahoma. Up the middle, here's Spencer Tillman. Tillman drives and twists and goes across the 40. Out to the 41, another near first down play. Darrell Grissom, number 17, on the stop. Pick up of nine. It'll be second down and one. Wishbone play to the fullback, the bread and butter play of the wishbone, and Spencer Tillman twists and drives and almost gets a first down out of it, picks up nine. 9.53, the clock is running here in the ball game. The Sooners late 27-14. Second down, one Oklahoma at their own 41-yard line. Dupree up the middle, big hole, 45-50, runs over a man at the 45. Holy smoke! Marcus Dupree, and there he is. And he ran over a two-time all-Pac-10 first-team oh. performer, 14 yards as Dupree ran right over Vaughn Williams. Ah, the man is absolutely impressive. As you see him run through the left side, a good hole opened up by the left side of that line, and look at him run right over Vaughn Williams. Wow. Turns, and Stanford finally makes the tackle, but another big pickup for Marcus Dupree. So Marcus is taking a little while to untrack. But boy, he is rolling now. 126 and counting. <laughs> 918 left in the game. Fakes to Dupree. Bradley wants to throw. Got Rhymes wide open and his chip. Nice play by Vaughn Williams. That's why he's all packed in. Came right. back from being run over on a play and almost had his second interception of the afternoon. But I tell you, uh, Buster Rhymes was wide open. Well, Danny Bradley rolls out to his right and he has Rhymes open, but Vaughn Williams is an outstanding player and got his hands on that playing from the strong safety position this year. He was a free safety last year. Wasn't that open, was he? <laughs> well, well, not a Vaughn Williams That's around. That's right. <laughs> he is tough. Second down and 10. Oklahoma at the Stanford 44-yard line. The Sooners are now 401 yards of total offense. Off the other side, Earl Johnson trying to shake a tackle and cannot. The crowd got all excited. They, didn't think, they thought it was Marcus Dupree, but it wasn't. Dupree is on the sidelines, taking a knee to get a Little blow, it looks like. John Bergman, the defensive end. Mark Andrew, middle linebacker, made the stop. <laughs> Here's another exciting Stanford football fan. Why did that guy pay to get in here? That's what yeah, I want to no, know. You can do that you on the grass <laughs> outside. <laughs> That's right. Third down and 10. The Stanford crowd cheering things on here. Oklahoma looking for a first down. They need to get to the 35. Maybe too much time. Danny Bradley has hit on four of eight passes today for 38 yards. So the, the Sooners, uh, this is an obvious passing situation. So they will match their uh, average in pass attempts last year as they threw about nine a game. Dupree comes back on number 22. Earl Johnson comes off. And the whistle was for offside as Buster Rhymes lined up offside. So that makes it third and 15 now. The ball is on the Stanford 49-yard line. The Sooners need the 35 for the first down. Sewell comes out. Coming in is freshman Derek Shepard. It's Barry Switzer. That one knee stance. He's looked out over 98 victories in his now starting. It's hard to believe, Robbie. His 11th season in Oklahoma football as a head coach. Third down, 15. Now there's another whistle. What's going on here? Now Oklahoma wants a timeout. Danny Bradley comes over, wants to uh, talk to the sideline. Eight minutes and five seconds left to play in this football game. Oklahoma faces third and 15 when we come back, leading by 13. Known as the Cardiac Kids last year, even though their record was five and six, now Stanford has taken a timeout. So we've had three stoppages of play here, and nothing has ticked off the clock as Paul Wigan wants to talk to I don't understand some of his that. assistant coaches. No, that leaves them with one timeout. You know, they don't need timeouts on defense. They need them on offense. Well, that's right. And this team last year, five and six, uh, lost their last three ball games of the year, but they beat some impressive people in the final seconds as they beat uh, Ohio State 23 to 20 at Ohio State last year. And then they beat Washington 43 31. And at that time, Washington was ranked number one in the nation. So this Stanford ball club keeps themselves in the ball game. And as the uh, performance by John Pay on that last series of downs showed, they've got somebody that can throw the football. And when you can throw the football like that, 
you can score in a hurry, and Stanford can score from anywhere on the field. So we're a long way from being over. The Sooners need to get something going here, keep the ball away from the Stanford offense. Each team now has one timeout remaining. Put the whistle in your pocket, and let's play some football. Third and 15. Again, the Sooners need the 35. They fake to Dupree. Bradley is running out, being chased, and is going to try to run. Now he throws back, and he's intercepted. Bad play, and he also had run past the line of scrimmage. He had run past the line of scrimmage. The interception was made there by Matt Sutherland, a linebacker. And the Sooners give up the football. Another turnover and another mistake. Well, you're absolutely right, Chris. Uh, Danny Bradley had no business throwing the ball. If he was going to throw it, he should have done it right about here. Tight end Johnny Fontenet was open. But Bradley didn't see him. He's trying to run. Now he's beyond the line of scrimmage and then throws into a crowd. And Sauterland comes up with the interception intended for Buster Rhymes. But Sauterland comes up with the ball. And now Stanford's got it at their own 29, 7.56 to go. And they got a quarterback who doesn't believe he can do anything wrong right now. And you can see why in those statistics. I don't blame him. He Heralded freshman from Atherton, California, the most highly recruited prospect. He chose Stanford over Notre Dame and a couple of other outstanding institutions. Hey, he's going to run. 30. Oh. <laughs> he's got the famous uh, quarterback dive down. That's right. He, he could step into the NFL tomorrow, couldn't he? He's got that. Uh, he's got that move down, Pat. And this really puts a great deal of pressure on the Oklahoma Sooner defensive front because they need to get a good pass rush on this kid. Look at the middle, open up for pay, picks up a few yards, and yeah. is safe at third. Six-yard gain on the play, second down and four, Stanford. At their 35-yard line with the clock running, it's 7.20 left in the game. The pitch goes outside to Henley, and Henley is swarmed under. He'll lose yardage on the play. Good job by the Oklahoma defense. Murphy was over there, Danny Wilson, 98, was there, 41, Johnny Truitt was there. Evan Gatewood in at the linebacker spot for the injured Jackie Ship. They're giving Ricky Bryan a rest, so the Sooners have some of the reserves in there, as you mentioned, uh, Wilson, uh, in there to try and get a pass rush, fresh players in there to try and put some heat on the quarterback, John Pay. Third and five for the Cardinals. Tommy Clemens is the nose guard, 93. Third down five. Cardinals lead near the 40-yard line. Pass is complete, and he is, looks like he has the first down. Tolliver knew exactly where he needed to go to get the first down. Pay put the money, uh, put the ball to him right on the money, and Tolliver and the Stanford Cardinal have the first down. As you see, the chain crews flip it over to first down. Stanford are the first and ten at their own 46, 29 left. They're trailing Oklahoma by 13. Go back up, man. back up, back up. Receiver split wide for the freshman John Pay. Throws quickly, sets the tight end, and goes to the 50, across the 50, breaks the tackle, 45, at the 40, at the 35, at the 30. He fumbles the football, it's loose, scramble for it, Oklahoma has it. Oklahoma has the football inside the 20, and they give it to him. Uh, excellent call. Yes, it was, because the ball was recovered inbounds. Who I can't Ryan Hall, Ryan Hall got the recovery, so a big break for the Oklahoma Sooners because Stanford really had something going here as tight end Jim Clymer makes an incredible run as he breaks out of case and drain. Oh, four. And uh, another tackler, now he's on the run. Thomas, Flemings, and Keynes, uh, Case uh, catch up to him. The ball pops loose, and there's Hall. As you can see, yeah. his knees are inbounds. It's a good call. Oklahoma comes up with a big turnover. Woo! And that was a big one, Robbie, because with that kind of time left, and Stanford had got in the end zone there, a touchdown away from winning this football game. The Sooners have it back. Danny Bradley, first and 10, Oklahoma 18. Marcus Dupree in the backfield. Here comes Dupree. Up the middle, across the play, and the ball is blown dead. My gosh, looks like somebody kicked the ball out of there. What a hot potato this thing has turned out to be here in the final seven minutes of this ball game. Brings a roar from the crowd, but the ball had been whistled dead. It'll be a second down play for the Oklahoma Center. Boy, Clymer really did a great job of running with the ball for Stanford as we take another look from ground level of Marcus Dupree. As he goes down right there, Varus on the tackle, and Dupree goes down, the play is whistled dead. 
to the turnovers. Oklahoma staff obviously will not be pleased with that final figure. Dupree got five. It's second and five. Marcus drops the football. Danny Bradley's on it. Holy smoke. Oklahoma has it back at their own 20-yard line. And Barry Switzer is not very pleased. He was about to send Earl Johnson in there. Now, this is where a veteran team has to come into play, Chris, as Marcus Dupree just dropped the football. There was nothing wrong with the pitch. The Sooners get it back, but a veteran ball club has got to maintain their poise, re remain calm in a situation like this, better than I'm doing right now, and uh, get something going here, third and nine for the Sooners. Well, Barry wasn't doing a real good job. As Coach Switzer had his head buried in his hands there, shaking his head. He was not real pleased as he saw that ball loose on the ground again. Gives us an opportunity to uh, thank Bob Rodkey, our director, and the fine production crew working with us here in California. Ed Baird, our spotter for Stanford, and uh, lovely Deborah Duran for the University of Oklahoma. And Elvin Lindblad, the Big E, as usual, on statistics. And we thank them for their help today. 4.50 left in the game. That's a concern. Barry Switzer on the Oklahoma sideline as he gets in that familiar stance. Third and long for the Sooners. 4.40 to go. They're at their 20. They need the 29 for the first down. Tillman. Dupree. Here is Tillman. 25. Spencer to the 30. First down. Oklahoma to the 32. Outstanding job by the freshman fullback. Boy, there is an awful lot of freshman talent on this football field today, Chris. The outstanding freshman quarterback for Stanford in John Pay, and two outstanding freshman running backs for the Oklahoma Sooners, and there's one of them, number 34, Spencer Tillman. What a big first down he gives the Sooners with 4.29 to go in the ball game. Oklahoma's got a player down on the field. Looks like maybe Fontanet, I think. Tight end. Either Fontenet or Clouis. Yeah, yeah, I can't be sure. Yeah, you're right. It might be Paul Clouis. Well, wait and see if they pick him up. I'll tell you something about Barry Switzer, too. He just he just fought Marcus Dupree out, and coming back in is the freshman Earl Johnson. Now, people thought that Barry Switzer was intimidated by some Sports Illustrated articles or threats that Marcus Dupree might leave or that he might sign a pro contract or that he wasn't happy. Uh, folks, that doesn't work with Barry Switzer. No, it doesn't. Uh, there's only one boss uh, of the Oklahoma football program, or any college football program for that matter. There's only one guy that's in charge, and uh, Marcus Dupree, uh, despite what people might read or hear, he understands that, and he has no problem with that. Barry Switzer and Marcus Dupree have one very important thing in common. They both want to win, and that's why Marcus Dupree is at the University of Oklahoma. So what Coach Switzer says goes. The freshman fullbacks today are the freshman running backs for Oklahoma today. Earl Johnson, 12 carries, 88 yards, two touchdowns. Spencer Tillman, 14 carries, 88 yards, and a big first down he just picked up right there. And the sophomore, Marcus Dupree, 21 carries, 128 yards. It is Johnny Fontenet. They're taking a lot of time with him. He's still a little groggy as he's being helped up. When Johnny Fontenet comes out, 6'5", 250-pound sophomore, Darren Jerry Hill of Jinx High School in Tulsa will come in to replace Fontenet. Uh, Fontenet is not the prototype tight end in the sense that he is not a great receiver, but he is an outstanding blocker, and that's why he has held on to the tight end job for the past two years. He has only caught one pass in his entire career, that the touchdown pass against Missouri last year. In the second half today, Marcus Dupree has carried the ball nine times for 97 yards. Pew when he had in the first half, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am. And if I could find my notes, Chris, I'd tell you what that was. <laughs> uh, 429 left to play in this football game. Oklahoma leading 27 to 14. And the Sooners will have a first down at their own 33-yard line. Clock is running. Johnson in the backfield for Oklahoma tailback. Spencer Tillman, the fullback. Danny Bradley's gone all the way at quarterback. There's Johnson. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage. Goes forward maybe to the 35-yard line, and that's about it. This is where the ball control offense for the Sooners really comes into play. Four minutes, and they are at their own 35-yard line, and this is where Coach Switzer would like to see his offense be able to control that ball, march it right down the field.
Buster Rhymes comes in for Paul Clewis to join the Sooners. Steve Sewell. Steve Sewell needs a big play. Young man from San Francisco, a lot of his friends here. Earl Johnson, the running back, gets it off the left side. Earl cuts in the middle, and Earl goes across the 40-yard line to the 41-yard line, and close to another Oklahoma first down as the clock continues to run. John Bergman, 85, the defensive end, made the stop. Now Johnson comes out. Marcus Dupree will go in. Here's Earl Johnson. Earl Johnson off the left side, finds some running room and keeps those legs pumping, gets to the 40-yard line. Third down play now for the Sooners. He's one of those north-south runners that various Switzer like. Sidney Dodd and Eric Pope working in the offensive line now for the Sooners. Dupree in the backfield at the 40. Marcus lowers his head and gets it, looks like, the first down out to the 43-yard line. Clock is stopped there. First down play with three minutes left. It may be that uh, the Sooner coaching staff wants to give uh, Randolph and Dillingham some rest, but the veterans there are Dodd and Eric Pope. They played more last year, and, and that's part of the, the veteranness of the of this Sooner ball club, and those are the people that are playing here in the critical part of the ball game. Three minutes to go. The Sooners lead 27-14. It is a first down for Oklahoma. Three minutes to go. That is first down number 20 for the Sooners today. Over 400 yards of total offense. is running under three minutes to play as Oklahoma has a first and ten at their own 43 yard line as you see Marcus Dupree's day 21 carries 136 yards he could get close to that 200 yard if he'd break one here and up the middle goes the fullback come into the 45 yard line where Mike Noble the sophomore linebacker makes the stop as Stanford has some reserves in there defensively as you see the clock at 232 well, Paul Wigan has had a distinction not many coaches have, and that is a series lead in victories over the University of Oklahoma. He was 1-0 coming into today, Robbie. That's right, and I, I wonder what he is thinking of his defense. His secondary certainly didn't get tested today, as Danny Bradley has only attempted nine passes, but the Sooners have rushed for almost 400 yards today, and they are naturally... Uh, Take a look at Coach Switzer. They are one of the better rushing football teams in the nation. So KGMC TV, Oklahoma City. Comments about how he feels his defense did today. Uh, Vance Carlson has stopped the action here because the scoreboard clock has been kind of going crazy the last few minutes. He has gone behind the Stanford bench to uh, pick up the phone to talk to the press box to find out what's going on uh, as far as the scoreboard goes and maybe to relay what he has as the official time on the field. This uh, stadium, the field runs north and south. Uh, north is to our left and the north scoreboard has been jumping back and forth. At one point, uh, the Stanford score was incorrect, gave them one point and the time was moving back and forth. Uh, the south scoreboard seems to be okay, but you take a look at the press box and the crowd here at Stanford Stadium, 62,000 plus in Stanford Stadium today. It seats uh, almost 85,000. Oh, now they're set to go. Second down and nine. From the Oklahoma 45 line, pitch to Marcus Dupree. Dupree turns outside, cuts up inside, and gets up to about the 48-yard line. Pat Mitchell, 75, the defensive tackle, and Mark Andrew, 93, made the stop on Dupree. Under two minutes to go now. Sooners home next week against an outstanding Ohio State ball club. We have talked a great deal today about the uh, senior-dominated Oklahoma football teams. Ohio State has just as many seniors on their team as Oklahoma. Should be an excellent ball game. Third down and five at the 48-yard line. Tillman up the middle, and Spencer gets near a first down for the Sooners. They'll stop the clock at a minute 23. See if he has it there. Spencer Tillman nears the 100-yard mark today. Dupree well over 100 yards. Earl Johnson close to 100 yards. The Sooners go over the 400-yard mark on the ground. One minute, 23 seconds left on the clock. Now 
they're going to call for an official's measurement and bring the chains in again. Big E corrects me again. We're at 399 on the ground. <laughs> Coach Switzer, perhaps breathing a bit more of a sigh of relief now. You know, he said at his weekly press luncheon on, on Tuesday, the Sooners about 11, 11 and a half point favorites as of this morning. And Coach Switzer said, I know it probably won't satisfy many people around the country, but I'll be happy to get out of there with a one point victory. <laughs> First down for the Oklahoma Sooners, 1.23 to go in the ball game. OU leads Stanford 27-14. And Stanford has just used its last timeout. So it should be a pretty quick 1.23 oh. left, don't you think? It helps so. I, th I don't think the Sooners would mind uh, getting another one in here. I don't, I don't know how badly they'd want to if uh, Coach Butcher would consider going to the air or not at this point. But remember, you're number two in the nation. And uh, I know coaches always, oh, that's terrible. It means nothing. Don't believe that for a second. They know what the polls mean, and they know that to stay there, you've got to have points, an impressive victory. And Robbie Wilder certainly is, I guess you use as a yardstick, the point spread has been handled by Oklahoma. It is not really, I think, what maybe the coaches in the back of their mind were thinking about when they, uh, when they came out here. And I think it's safe to say if it were not for the five turnovers, it'd be much more the Oklahoma performance they were looking for. Well, I think that's right, Chris. Uh, Oklahoma certainly had opportunities, especially in the first half but uh, they're going to win the football game and that's what they came out here to do and i really don't think coach switzer's interested in uh, in trying to put any more points on the board through the air i think they'll stay on the ground and run the clock first and ten oklahoma at the stanford 47 yard line marcus dupree cuts back of the 45 the 40 and down inside the 40. may not be the most yards he's got but it's been one of his better runs today certainly Eric Price, 27, Darrell Grissom, 17, made the tackle on the sensational center sophomore. He's close to a 150-yard day with less than a minute to play. Oklahoma at the 37-yard line of the Stanford Cardinal. See Jackie Ship sitting all alone on the bench. Hope he's not too seriously hurt. Nothing there for Spencer Tillman. Mark Ender, the middle linebacker, made a nice play to fill the hole there. Sooners. They need one more play, it looks like. And you see the clock going down. Derek Shepard, a freshman, is coming in for Steve Sewell at a flanker spot for the Sooners. This play ought to do it, buying any penalties. Ten seconds left on the clock. Third down and one, Oklahoma. Bradley keeps it, sneaks straight ahead, knocks down, and that is going to do it. It is a first down for Oklahoma, and they've got to stop the clock to mark the first down. And they'll move the chains and roll it out, and that's going to just about do it. I One think, second, that's it. I think the Sooners will get mixed reviews. There were moments of brilliance today. There were weak moments today. Turnovers was a problem, but the Sooners win it 27-14, and they'll be home next Saturday to take on Ohio State. And Marcus Dupree, while getting off to a slow start in the first half, showed the Marcus Dupree form of old as he ends up unofficially with 24 carries and 148 yards on the ground. The Sooners also had Tillman with 94 yards. Danny Bradley with 88 yards and Earl Johnson with 88 yards. That's the end of the football game. We'll be back to wrap it up as Oklahoma wins 27 to 14.